Hello and welcome to the Mastermind Body and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. As you know, we are facing extreme censorship alongside many other true seekers out there. If you want to support this show, go over to mattbelair.com, sign up for the email list, join the Academy for exclusive and censorship free content, become a patron, and most importantly, consider doing three kind acts today wherever you are in the world. Now let's get into tonight's show. Today's guest is a successful businessman who walked away from his very successful company to pursue spreading the truth about our world. He is the host of the Flat Earth Podcast and creator of the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. He has the ability to take anyone from ridiculing the idea of a flat earth to the mind-blowing understanding that we don't live on a spinning, wobbling, rocketing water ball in an infinite vacuum. He also shows you why this topic is the most important topic of these troubled times. Welcome to the show, David Weiss. Matt, thanks for having me. This is going to be a fun conversation. And, uh, you know, can I take anybody? I've noticed that there are some people that can't be taken anywhere. They, you know, they have their masks on and they, they're, they're lining up for their vaccine and you can't show them anything. But any thinking person. Um, I can take away from the ball because, as you said uh, in that intro, um, we don't live on a spinning, wobbling pear rocket water ball in an infinite vacuum. I mean, if you just take the time and think about that, it, you know that it's, there's problems. Well, yeah, man, I'm excited to get into this. Um, I have been flat earth before and I found it very exciting. And, you know, what I've spoken a lot recently was something I learned called the formula for truth. And the idea is that you could have flat earth or round earth, or you could be, you know, Jesus Christ or an atheist, or you could be, um, you know, COVID-19 is the worst thing, or it's, it's nothing, just polar opposites. And what most people do is they shut out, you know, if you have a zero and 90 degrees and you got 45 degrees is, is about the middle somewhere where the truth is. What we do is we just, we don't listen. But maybe if we open up to that, you know, other person's perspective at like 98% or at 96%, you're going to find something that you didn't know. And it also says that information evolves. That's why in law, they call it a discovery of truth. Because when I went to law and security uh, and did police foundations, what you know is that when you go and interview a person about the robbery or whatever happened, their memory is already janky. They don't, they can't remember anything. And so like the information is incredibly limited. And the first time I ever applied this was to somebody who said, yeah, man, the earth's flat. And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, okay. And I said, lay it on me. And it was a two and a half hour experience going through YouTube videos. And and I was asking all these questions and I was like, oh my God, like, this is so interesting. And at the end of that experience, I had some questions. I was like, oh, wow, that, that was pretty compelling. But the even more important thing for me was I was thinking about ways in a whole new Like I was thinking in whole new ways. Like it didn't matter whether the earth was flat or the earth was round. What mattered, I had upgrades in thinking. And what if it is? And what I do know for sure is if you research medicine, which I did because of COVID-19, you go all the way back. Then you say, oh, wow, look at what Rockefeller did to medicine. It's not all bad doctors or, um, you know, bad people. It's it's good people in a bad system that got bought and paid and manipulated. I also had a Zuni elder on Clifford Mahoudi. And what he said was that people don't listen. He goes, once you listen to somebody fully, then you can give your opinion. Then you can actually say something, but people don't listen to the other side. And he had his entire, I asked him after the show, I said, Clifford, how are we going to save the Zuni history? If all the kids aren't learning what you learned and you're about the last generation, how are you going to save that? He goes, I don't think we can. And so now that history of entire Native American culture is going to be gone as a 20,000 years, as far as I know anyway. So that's my rant to kind of like tee it up, to get the listeners to just suspend disbelief and seek understanding rather than shutting off all that information. And then, um, you know, holding two thoughts, Socrates has a quote like that, holding two thoughts and not believing it or whatever. So I'm teeing you up so you can go (laughs) deep, man, because I'm going to go all the way into it. I know a little bit here and there. I've seen some stuff that make me uh, question. So I'm excited about this. Matt, you've seen it. So you feel the excitement because there's excitement and truth. And you, you kind of made the joking comment like, oh, you're going to drag me into this flat earth. Well, <laughs> all of us flat earthers were dragged in kicking and screaming. You know, I would <laughs> not look at a one minute video. I ban people from our social media for being so stupid as suggesting that I look at a thing called the flat earth. Dumbest shit ever. And uh, <laughs> then I was forced. I told the story a million times. I was forced to look and I said, all right, I'm going to prove the ball. I'm tired of this. I'm going to prove the globe. And that's the end of it. And uh, I didn't sleep for two weeks and I was did everything I could and I came out the other side five, six years later, here I am. 
Um, I'm doing this full time. I left my own company uh, because this is the most important or um, foundation of truths. Because if you don't know where you're standing, if you think you're on an infinite spec in a in a godless infinite vacuum or distant God vacuum at best, um, you've lost, you've given away your divinity, you've given away your true power, and you could be convinced of anything like that there's magic little bugs flying through the air waiting to go, you know, around your, you know, into your mouth and kill you. Yep. And again, you know, with the magic little bugs one, you know, and, and I peel back that curtain and you go all the way back to germ theory versus terrain theory. And if you go back to that argument, terrain theory makes a lot more sense than germ theory. You know, it, it is it is a very we if you go toe to toe and you watch two intelligent people argue uh, their points, terrain theory makes way more sense. But we're living in a germ theory paradigm where you have pharmaceuticals and vaccines that have a trillion dollar industry. Um mostly funded and created by the Rockefellers who had enough wealth at the time to do that. But you, it takes a lot of digging to figure that out. And now what's even worse is we're having this book burning like we've never seen before. So half the videos that I saved are gone. Half of these old talks you pe see people in the eighties or seventies about yeah, this I'm stuff, the they get deleted all. too. So when they come up, you're like, wow, like that was amazing information, but then it's gone. And so what about the actual book burnings um, throughout history? You know, history was recorded by the winners. So, we, you know, it's our history is a very tough thing to trust. Um, and so I'd love for you to just start with your journey. You know, you're a successful businessman. Um, you know, one day somebody pulls you into flat earth, you try to disprove it. Maybe you're like Eddie Bravo on Joe Rogan. And, uh, you know, Eddie Bravo is not a stupid guy either, man. That guy's like a jujitsu master. And, uh, and I know actually a few, uh, uh, flat earthers that don't come out. And I had Michael Tellinger on my podcast as well. And he was saying that, you know, he when he, yeah, when he came out, people, he's like, I've never been under such crazy attack. And yeah. his books are like, you know, thousands of pages. That guy's a researcher. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I got to let you talk. So tell us about uh, your your journey into this and and why you wanted to commit to it. Well, my journey started is, um, you know, we were a buddy of mine. I worked for Corporate America. And in the lunchroom, we were talking about the Federal Reserve every day and different things. And and more and more people gathered around every day. And then, uh, whoops, he goes, hey, we have a, uh, we can do a podcast out of New York City. I, I know somebody. And I barely knew what a podcast was. I'm like, all right, Leah, let's do that. And I did a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, where we looked into conspiracies. And um, we went, started going into, you know, deep into conspiracy. The, the episode one, the title was 9-11 is Dave's Baby, right? Because I, I actually blew up the entire studio, no pun intended, with, uh, with, that, with that story. But long, long story short, two years into it, started getting emails, check out the flat earth, check out the flat earth, banned everybody, wouldn't look, wouldn't look. Then I was forced to look, as I said earlier, and uh, I came out the other side going, oh, my God, you know, the earth is flat. Didn't want to talk about it for a couple of months. Didn't want to bring it up on a show because flat earth will discredit everything else I've ever done. It's the dumbest, you know, it's a psyop, right? That's what everyone says. And uh, it's the opposite of the psyop. The psyop is that it's a psyop within a psyop, right? <laughs> you're, you're, we're five minutes in, you're inceptioning me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, it's, it's um, so then, you know, basically the, that podcast blew up. It ran its course, went for three years. And uh, I took some time off and then I started the Flat Earth podcast because there was so much to talk about. And, uh, and then things went on and I actually, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be explaining Flat Earth to people in person. And I was like, I wish I had something on my phone. So I developed an app which called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app. And I, I made it just for myself. I wasn't even going to publish it. I just wanted something where I could show people um, how the Flat Earth works. And it ended up being pretty cool. And I, I've been working on it for three years now, almost three years. And it's a great tool to show people the basics. So maybe I can share the screen right now, show you guys, um, give you like a two minute tutorial of how um, things like seasons and uh, stars and the sun and the moon work in our skies. That sound good? Yeah, sounds good to me. I've just made you the host, so you should be able to share. All right, um, sharing. So you guys can see, uh, see the app? Yep. All right, so we live in the Antarctic basin, right? The shoreline of the world ocean is the is Antarctica and it surrounds our our oceans. Antarctica is the highest land on earth, all right? It's not something that they really teach you in school. So think about that, the highest land with the pond, right? In in the lower area. So that's the world. Um, beyond Antarctica is an ice plain that goes on for hundreds of miles and then there's a mountain range that's supposedly higher than Mount Everest. Um, and I it probably goes all the way around, but again, those are off limits. We can get into that in a little bit if you want. So on the flat earth, the, 
sun is the hour hand and it marks the hours and the days and it goes around once every 24 hours. So wherever the sun is, it's 12 noon right at that spot. So the sun is rising in uh, Africa right now. You know, it's coming along. There's it coming up on Madagascar. It's noon in Madagascar. So the sun goes around once every 24 hours. I'll speed it up. And the sun laps the moon once every 28 days. It's going a little bit faster than the moon. So you see it's catching up to the moon. The moon's phases change. It goes into the new moon phase, um, stay, spends a couple days there. And then uh, there's your waxing crescent and the moon is you know trailing behind. So the sun laps the moon. The moon marks the months. The sun marks the days. And that makes sense to you right now? Kind of. Yeah. I'm not so good into astrology, astrology, so I think a lot of the astrologers are going to pick up a lot more. My first initial question is, what about the stars? That's what people are going to say. All right. So that, I'm going to get <laughs> to the stars. So just think of the, the sky as a perfect clock. It, it, is, it is a perfect clock. And the sun marks the hours. The moon marks the months. And that's it. So then I'll turn on the stars. Here, here's the zodiac. And the stars rotate in the same manner. They're on a separate wheel. And the stars are going slightly faster than the sun. So just a little bit where it, it takes 365 rotations for the stars to lap the sun once. So with that being said, in 30 days from now, right now the sun is here. In 30 days, it'll be in here. And 30 days later, it'll be in here because these are catching up. So that's how that when they say the sun is in whatever sign it is, um, that's how the signs work and the stars these are the stars that are in fixed positions in the skies. If you go out tonight and look at the stars, they're, they're going to be in the exact same position they were last year on this night, 10 years ago, 10 years from now. They're in the exact same position every year on the same night. So that's another flat and stationary proof. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. So let me turn that off. Um, in the app, people, you know, I can turn on, um, I can turn on the, the uh, world time. So wherever it shows you what time it is. So right now it's almost, it's almost noon in uh, Eastern Australia. It's um, 3 AM in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, it's, you know, 8 PM in the East coast right here, 8 PM um, in the East coast where I am. So that shows you world times. Uh, it has the frequently asked questions. So people say, you know, what, what, what about, you know, where, where's the edge? Whoops, I click where's the edge and up come a list of videos about where's the edge. Um, I can say why the lie. My, uh, my where's the edge got stuck. Of course that happens. Um, so, so you have your frequently asked questions. So it, all the questions you ask will be in there. So why the lie, are pilots and scientists all in on it? Um, they're all there, tons of answers for you. We have all sorts of other resources, including you know, down at the bottom here, mud floods, if you haven't looked into that. Um, we have uh, all sorts of stuff, uh, debunking videos where people say, well, I saw this Professor Dave or this Simon Dan or, or whatever. Well, all of those videos are completely taken apart here in detail. We have some stuff on our, our favorite beer up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll keep going. No, no go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say the Simon Dan, that's what I would want to, um, make like a debate happen. You know what I mean? Like two, you know, I want, I want to see that happen to both sides. Cause I have an engineer friend that I, um, that I told him you were coming on and he's like, I have some questions cause I have an engineer. I was like, great, man. I was like, as an engineer, you can, you know, that's how we're going to get closer to the truth. You know, I was like, yeah. this would be good. That's what we need. That's what we need to see. We have uh, engineers that, we, that have made videos. Um, um, what's the guy's name? Brian Mullen, he's an engineer, did a series of videos, amazing. Uh, and they're all, they're all uh, in the app. You can find them. I have a different languages, a playlist in different languages for people. Um, every, and here's the beautiful thing on the app. This is what I tell people. Get the Flat Earth app and take the, the Flat Earth app challenge. Every day, there's a new video that shows up right here. So there's a new video. You click that image and up comes the video. Short videos during the week, you know, a couple minutes, longer ones on the weekends. I say, watch a video every day for two weeks and you will know that you don't live on a spinning ball. And the messages I get is, hey, hey, I saw you on Matthew's show and I bought your stupid app for $2.99 <laughs> and I took the challenge, but I didn't want to wait. And I hit the archive button, which is that red button next to it. And up come all of the videos from all of the previous months. And... Um, and I haven't slept in two days and oh my God, you've ruined my life. The earth is flat and my, you know, my girlfriend <laughs> thinks I'm crazy and whatever. So there's a ton of other stuff on the app, um, but it's the greatest teaching tool. Oh, let me show you seasons right now. 
the sun is out here on the, it's almost over this outer yellow line, which is known as the Tropic of Capricorn. So the sun migrates in between these two yellow lines. It takes six months later, I can jump it forward six months and that is June. And in June, the sun's over the Tropic of Cancer and it's closer to the inner Northern lands. So that's why it's warmer. And because it's closer, we have a small local sun, it's higher in the sky and we have more heat. And when it's back out here in December, where we are now, it's the outer Southern lands summer. And, it's, and the, the sun for us is low in the sky because it's far away. Make sense? Yeah. So, okay. So what is the sun? I got so many questions. So what, what is, is the, the sun? sun? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to start with the tough ones, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, I was at, uh, I, I was at, I was in Egypt with the resonance science foundation. Yeah. And I guess they were saying at the time that gravity isn't simple. They can't explain gravity. Like your best scientists can't explain how gravity works. And I'm, I, you know, I might, might not be saying this, maybe somebody can, and if they can post it in the comments, but they were, I think pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what they're discussing, how it's like not a very simple explanation. And so we have these universal uh, laws that are very interesting, are very challenging to explain that you kind of like just take for granted. So do you, do you, is that a tough one? I don't know. You know? you know, well, let's I have a lot start of with gravity. You want to start with gravity for a second or? Sure. Yeah, let's go into that. Yeah. So so gravity is just a theory and uh, science uh, you know, admits it's a theory that there's no proof that uh, that you know, mass attracts mass. As a matter of fact, they had to make up a thing called dark matter because it, that fills up like I think it's 96 percent of the universe is dark matter because their equations don't work without dark matter. And they still don't work even with the dark matter. It's complete and utter nonsense. Um, the and Earth has is- a. And okay. this is what I was uh, uh, observing, you know, with these uh, physicists and engineers, they're talking about gravity and how there wasn't a, like a solid uh, uniform conclusion that they knew what gravity was and how it worked or, you know, how it worked essentially. Right. So, you know, it, they, they have a thing called the three body problem. And that's because that's where, you know, they can make a computer model and have a sun with a X amount of gravity and a planet with X amount of gravity, and it'll work perfectly. But then when you add a third body in there with gravity, the whole model falls apart. Well, our solar system has a hundred different bodies in it with all the moons and everything. And uh, it, it makes absolutely no sense, um, you know, with all of these things spiraling around. I'm trying to find out. Yeah, so here, here's, uh, this is what our solar system is supposedly doing. We're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. We're orbiting the, or the, the sun at 66,000 miles per hour. We're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour, right? All the other planets are staying on that same plane around the sun and moving with, you know, on that same plane, which is, they'd be going around like a beehive, right? If it was a random universe. And one of the all- things that- Gosh, I, should keep, I, I usually don't cut people off so much. I apologize. I just no, no, no problem. Exa- I can talk forever. Yeah, one of the ones I was telling my buddy about because I, I use that as an example. Like flat Earth for so many people is like a, a don't pass go. For me, I am just so curious. I want to hear everybody's opinion and go into it. And when there's a hard resistance to any of them, right, and there's such ridicule around it, that's probably even more curious yeah. about why that's happening. And so I just thought about the gas. So we'll probably get into NASA and some of the stuff I know for sure, NASA being super sketchy, the uh, origins being linked to uh, Rockefeller and also Hollywood right. and how all that whole thing worked and the moon landing and some weird stuff there. But I just thought about the earth, right? And the gasoline from the combustion chamber. Then what happens when you get out, if we're spinning through that, how does it like get to the moon? Maybe it's a physicist just come on and give me a simple answer. But I think about the gas to get all the way to the moon as it has to chase it. Like if you were chasing somebody else on a boat, yeah. And you there, jumped off, you would have to match the speed of the boat and then get to the next boat ahead, you know? So I was like, I don't understand that. How does Haley's Comet find much. us 76 years later when we're billions of miles in a different place? Okay, how does it go all the way out and then keep up with where we're going? Because we're moving at a half a million miles an hour. We're going sideways at over a million miles per hour. There's four different motions happening at once. So check this out. You got the, the sun and you got the distant earth, 93 million miles away. And the earth is falling around the sun because the sun is holding on to the earth with its magical gravity. And it's falling around the earth, right? Because it's held on and it's falling around in a perfect pattern, like a timepiece in a clock, which is insane, right? And then the moon is going the opposite direction around the earth. Okay, it's caught in the earth's gravity. What happens when the moon is right in between the sun and the earth? How come the sun's gravity doesn't rip it away or at least tug it a little bit, okay? And screw up its orbit, right? If you think about it, it makes absolutely no sense. You know, that this is the three body problem. And now, now add in another seven planets and all of their moons 
And it, it's, it's absolute insanity to even think that that makes any sense whatsoever. You okay, so Go yeah, ahead. I'm with you so far. So my main questions that I'm curious about, um, because the astrological stuff, I don't know as well, but there are some things that I know a little bit more. Like I've heard that there's a lot of different Bible verses that reference the flat earth. And I'm wondering if you have like a collection of those, because I find that very interesting. And where are you finding the information that is sharing that this is indeed uh, a flat plane? Because the first time that I went down this rabbit hole, um, the guy brought up like a six hour video of this tiny yogi with painted up. The guy was old as crap. He was like, you know, 90 years old and, and tiny. And he has this little stick and it's like a nine hour video. And he's explaining how the earth is flat from the Vedas. And I was like, holy smokes, that's really fascinating because that's some ancient stuff. So, uh, you know, mm. when, when history can be written by the winners or it can be modified or there can be book burnings, that's where I'm like, how do we, how do we get to that knowledge? Where does it come from? And also, uh, you, you, you shared this on your, uh, in your app, what, what the hell is the point of this? And I have an idea, um, you know, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on those two things. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get to why the lie just a little later. Let's just go through some of the things like, um, you know, you ask for a proof. One of the, one of my favorite proofs is we can see too far. You know, they say boats go over the horizon, but they don't, they just get too small for our eye to see. So as we zoom out, this giant boat will just disappear um, because its angular size is too small to see. And people will assume it went over the horizon, but it's not, it's gone, it's invisible right there. But if I zoom back in, you'd see it. Let's watch this one. As we go out, it disappears and it looks like it's disappearing from the bottom up, but it's not, it's all the way your eyes work, the way perspective works. You see that? Yeah, and I've also seen a video of um, the, they talk about the curvature of the Earth, and there's an airplane pilot, and he goes in to the cockpit, and he goes, "Hey boys, I'm a fellow pilot. Um, Earth is flat, right?" And they both think the one pilot's like, "Yeah, flat as a pancake." He's like, "You're not pulling my leg." He's like, "Nope, flat as a pancake." Because yeah. you look at the um, the the uh, the images, the high altitude images, and it, you always see a flat plane. And the only curvature you see is a, a computer generated image. And I guess the only image of satellites are computer generated images. And the other thing that I saw fascinating, I need, I need an answer to is the apparent uh, temperature at certain altitudes are meant to be whatever they are, you know, super hot. And you match that temperature with what a satellite would look like or Elon Musk's car. Um, and they say, well, this is what would happen to leather at that heat and where the, where they're showing what the heat was from. And again, this is a video I think I got deleted, so I'm not giving really great details. So you like always do your own damn research and tell me what you think. Um, but uh, you know what I'm talking about? I, I do. There, there's you, you unwrapping a lot of things there. The whole, you know, anyone, there's so many people like, that's so cool. Elon Musk put his Tesla in space. I'm like, did you watch it? They're like, oh, no, no, I just heard it about, I heard about it. Because if you watch it and with any bit of discernment, even like a, three-year-old's discernment it's it's a complete and total joke it's absolutely ridiculous i actually had a picture of it which uh i don't have right handy right now but it's um it shows you the globe earth and they, at the time they took that picture they weren't even up as high as the space shuttle the space station the fake space station and uh you know the curvature is all wrong the there's no land um there's glitching it's all uh computer generated talking about you know airplane pilots at 550 miles an hour, you'd have to nose down a mile every two minutes. Otherwise, you're going to fly off into space. Okay? No pilot ever does that. Airplanes fly straight across the Earth plane. Make sense? Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> um, what, where else were you? You brought up a lot of topics. and uh, the, I, I, I the, can't temp up. <laughs> the, the temperatures as they rise, you know, like apparently right. 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, it gets really, really hot. But... Um, you're seeing satellites float around at that. At yeah, that in the thermosphere, they say it's like yeah. a couple thousand degrees. You know, what metal survives in that? Um, satellites, you know, people say, you know, what about world communications? Well, world communications, 99% of it's done with undersea cables. Here's a map of the cables that they admit they have. There's probably others. Um, and that's how, you know, transatlantic communications happen. NASA also has the largest, uh, they're, the, they're the largest consumer of helium. And I believe they own many helium companies um, because they put up uh, balloons uh, that carry, you know, satellites up to 8,000 pounds that stay up there for a year or more. And why don't we hear about this? You know, what are those doing? Are those doing communications? I don't believe that actually much of our, um, you know, satellite coverage, our GPS coverage is actually 
balloons um, because there is no satellite uh, GPS and uh, when you're far offshore, even like between California and Hawaii, the planes go into approximated mode. It doesn't show them exactly where they are. They just calculate where they are based on their flight plan. Right. So, yeah, and I guess the flight patterns are really strange. Like, why? Like, if you look at the map and 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 if you look at the flight patterns, that's that's one of the videos I saw where, and I actually looked it up. I tried to find the flight, and I was like, why? Why would they fly like if it were like that? That makes no sense. But the isn't it the UN has a flat Earth map or something on their on their? Yeah, the UN map is a flat Earth map. But here, check yeah. out this this flight path. So there's Australia right over here and uh, Santiago, Chile. So the, the normal flight goes all the way up into the Northern hemisphere, cuts across and then goes down. Why didn't they just go underneath the ball? You know, why didn't they just go, um, you know, underneath, right underneath the bottom or stay down in the lower part and just go across the shore? I can't, I'm sorry, hard to do this. I'm not a good weatherman yet. Why didn't they just fly there? Why did they go all the way up over and then, and then down? It makes no sense. And the reason is, um, it's simple. The earth is flat. And this is the real flight. That's the same path that I showed you that went all the way up to the north. It's a straight line. So that's how they fly when they go and they stop for gas in the United States, maybe two stops. And then they then they continue. Um, it's a straight line. But on a globe, it's this big arc. So, you know, that all international flights and maybe even all flights are um, controlled by NASA. NASA is responsible for all of the flight plans. Interesting. Well, so I, I'd like you to go into a little bit about NASA because what I've looked up, NASA's connection to Hollywood, they were actually called something else. So they seem a little bit sketchy and untrustworthy. I know for sure Hollywood should not be trusted. And I know how powerful uh, the television is. The The television is incredibly powerful. It's been used. You know, can you imagine um, – before they had TV and they look at this TV and then believe in whatever it's saying. And now you can program that television. That's why they call it program and tell live vision, you know, all these different things. And so you've got NASA's connection to Hollywood. And I know specifically just from working with the international tribunal of natural justice with uh, studying psychological operations, I can hear the language patterns and I know what they're doing as far as, you know, creating people that are afraid, you know, we've got that new movie coming out. Um, uh, butter, I don't know what it's songbird, where they're basically trying to project this dystopian society that they want. It's it's not by accident, it's on purpose. Um, but people they kind of they believe the reality that they're given. And I've always questioned everything. And the more I've uncovered everything, I'm like, oh damn, like that's a lie. Oh damn, that's a lie. And if you go down any of these rabbit holes, whether it's food and you go all the way to the bottom of food, you start questioning things like what is actually going on here? Um, health, government, anything along those lines, you're gonna realize that it was hijacked by somebody in power at some time to create an architect, some sort of reality that we get to stay in as essential sheep. And um, so, yeah, talk about NASA for a second. I'm going to start firing more questions at you. You quoted the Truman show, you know, that we accept the reality that we are shown. Yeah. And that's the true man show, you know, where they, where they live in a dome. Um, the question, what was the question NASA and their, and their, Bull Give us crap. a little bit about why NASA's baloney. <laughs> well, first, their logo <laughs> is a snake tongue, so that's got to tell you something. You know, that's it's not that doesn't just happen by accident. Um, do you remember when uh, last year they had a hole in the space shuttle, or, or maybe a year or two ago? A micrometeorite made a hole, and they fixed it with gum and duct tape. I think. Okay, oh. <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, and Chris uh, Hatfield tweeted, "Here's the hole." Okay, I mean, I can't see which one's which, but basically. That's the hole that Chris Hatfield tweeted that they fix. And this is a, one of them is an album cover from a band from years before. It's the same picture. Okay. Oh, that wow. should be enough to tell you NASA's full crap. Okay. Makes sense. I yeah, mean, it makes sense. I, I was remembering there's some, oh yeah, there's a, one of the other ones that, I, that makes me curious is if you look at the interviews with NASA, um, astronauts now they say why don't you go back to the moon and they say they don't have the technology there's multiple interviews of them saying they don't have the technology to get to the moon how in the hell do you have the technology in what is it the 60s and go back a whole bunch of times and now you can't the the global argument is you know they did it with these you know back with tape reels or whatever and to recreate it it's it's more difficult and we already did that so now we're going to mars you can make up excuses all day you know, NASA does all of their training in a pool, which makes no sense because in a pool, everything's trying to get in and in space, everything's trying to get out of your suit. So here they are in a pool. The pool has green screens for some reason, and it kind of looks like space, you know, 
we catch them with bubbles in space all the time. You used to be able to Google bubbles in space and up would come all of our videos, but YouTube's algorithms have hidden all of that information. That's why you got to get the app because when, uh, when you look at a video on the app, all of the following videos are videos from the app, not from Google's algorithms. So if, you've, if you're looking at one topic, it'll keep feeding you more and more information. Um, and I've watched this in real time with all the coronavirus information. I've yeah. watched half the videos I saved get deleted. Some yep. of them were old videos and then the algorithms change. So when you try to look something up, all it'll show is uh, flat earth debunked moron or coronavirus idiot. And it's always a shaming. It's always uh, a vicious attack. It's never um, any, you know, it's always a uh, ridicule. Right. And I can't remember, I saw something, some sort of quote, but basically said, you know, the main argument is always ridicule. It's the most terrifying thing. When you just ridicule someone, um, they're too afraid to look into it. And I'll, t you know, even for myself, like the flat earth stuff, I looked at it and I just, it was so vehement. It was so vicious. I was resistant and I'm pretty open to it. Like, I just want to know what I'm in Egypt talking about aliens and civilizations, all this different stuff. But the flat earth was especially frightening because of the such attack that you get. And so when you reached out, it was like, damn it, I got to do it. And then, and then now for history, you peak, can have people go on there and even now with this coronavirus stuff that's what they'll say oh it's a uh, flat earth science or whatever and i'm like well you know i would like to see you know someone else's argument versus your argument because i don't claim to be smarter than anyone and right. if you ask somebody to prove the the ball earth like my dad or anyone else i'll just say well, how do you know like just how do you know and they say because it is and yeah I was like, because well, that's, it is because i was told nobody yeah. likes having their ball taken away from them we've been programmed before we can talk um you know we had Mobile, the, 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 the planets above us as a baby. Sesame Street had astronauts on there and the, and the yip yaps talking about the moon and the, and the earth. And um, it's, in, it's everywhere, it's programmed. Then you go to school, you know, when you're in kindergarten, your teacher's a god and what do they have at the front of the room? A globe, okay? And they show you where you live and they show you how gravity works by swinging a bucket of water around. It, it's, it's complete and total nonsense. I mean, this is what you need to believe in the globe. And this is all you need to understand that the earth is flat and stationary because if the water was convex, you know, it had, it had curvature to it, you wouldn't see that line. It would just go, it would stop at the curve. Mm. You, you can do that. Get a, get a piece of flexible, shiny material, put a light down on the edge and watch it go across and then just bend it a little bit and watch that light doesn't do that. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I want, you got so many questions. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, one more, one more. <laughs> okay. Jupiter is a gaseous planet, we're told. And when we watch videos from NASA, those, the, 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 they're spinning in different directions, all those lines. And you got the storm here, okay, taken two years apart, okay? And they were able to get this amazing polar, this is from NASA, official photo from NASA. They got these amazing uh, auroras. Does that, 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 by the way, that's impossible to Photoshop. You can't do that in Photoshop. Okay, it's impossible. All right. But if you lay these two on top of each other, that's sarcasm. Um, <laughs> there's every single, every single little, little bump and everything is exactly the same. They're ex exactly the same. Okay. Official photo from NASA. Two years later, official photo from NASA. Okay. That tells you NASA's lying. It's it. And once you unwind any, just one of these fakeries, unwind it, we didn't go to the moon. Earth is flat. right. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. There, <laughs> there's so many things. Okay. One of them is what's this girl's name? Something, uh, Rosa Corey, you oh, know, Rosa, her? the Werner von Braun's, uh, secretary. Is that who it is? No, no. It Rosa Corey. She's behind the green mask, right? She was talking about exposing, uh, agenda 21, uh, yeah. agenda, agenda 21. And I watched her, one of these old documents that you could actually find and read. And it was like the future of weaponization by NASA. And it was such a messed up document. I think it was from the 80s that I read. And I was like, holy shit, this is very interesting. So I, I want you to kind of go back and explain. I think the NASA the NASA connection for um, their inception as a, as a company and then their link to Hollywood. Do you know anything about that? Or can you summarize it briefly? I can, I can summarize it. You know, Werner von Braun was supposedly brought over from NASA. He's a, a not from NASA, from uh, Russia, a Russian rocket scientist brought over to run NASA. OK, if you ask me, I think he's just an actor with a story, you know, that he came from Russia because, you know, the whole Cold War, it's all nonsense. It, none of there was no real no Cold War. It's all just divide and separate the masses, you know, sp split everyone up by countries, by religions, by sports teams, by race, by political team, divide, 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 divide. So we can't get our collective consciousness together and create this world, you know, and that's how they control us, because. The PSYOP is that we are powerless and we can't do anything. They have total control over us. That's the PSYOP. Um, 
So, so NASA, you know, was supposedly started by him. NASA gets, you know, uh, $65 million a day right now, supposedly. Well, at least that's what they're taking from us. But NASA has never put anyone in space. Now, you know, no, nobody is in those rockets when they take off. Okay, it's all a, a magic trick. It's all deception on, on many levels. So to answer your question, or was it deeper? <laughs> no, that's that's good. That works for me. I just I remember seeing somebody's uh, video. It's probably in your collection there, and oh it showed uh, the correlation between NASA and Hollywood, and just how uh, NASA actually rebranded itself, and then you know right. they basically used Hollywood movies to influence. If you look back, it's all about uh, space travel and aliens and ETs and all this kind of stuff. And look, so it is interesting that they focus on that. And and I'm super curious about space and, and aliens and stuff like that. So it's very here's intriguing. The, here's the problem. Here's the problem with uh, accepting flat earth you have to give up star wars star trek you know the all of the space movies you have to you have to let them all go right get off my I'd, show right now i won't yeah. i won't do it <laughs> i know I, I love them i love i love them but here's the thing i believe that extraterrestrials are amongst us uh, that that you know maybe the elite have the um ability to go now extraterrestrials are on the lands beyond antarctica you know we live mm -hmm. in the antarctic basin right so maybe they're they're going beyond Antarctica. Um, where is it? Yeah, so you know, here it is, and maybe they have the ability to go beyond, and there's other lands out there, other continents. Maybe there's other worlds across the, the flat plain that have their own suns that melted out their own puddles in this massive ice sheet that we live on. I don't know, because you know, nobody is allowed to independently explore beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. Admiral Byrd, right? Yeah, Ad Admiral Byrd. He went and said that there was a land, you know, bigger than the United States, never touched by a human uh, beyond the pole. Right. And that's all he said. So, again, we weren't there. Admiral Byrd, you know, was a military guy. He's probably a Freemason. Was he supposed to tell us that? Did that slip out? Were they just discovering the makeup of the world, you know, in, in 1957 when they went down there? Because right after he made that speech, they started the Antarctic Treaty. And they put they started NASA. OK, the Antarctic Treaty put a fence around us that said we have to protect the ice and the penguins. We can't drop a cigarette butt down here or we'll ruin this pristine ice. But why, why we're protecting that? Go deforest the Amazon and grow palm trees, you know, palm oil trees. That's fine. But we have to protect the ice. So if all the countries before um, being uh, um, what's the word for being eco friendly before that the whole movement started. They, all the countries in the world signed on to this treaty. No one can even question the treaty until 2041. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's insane. And, you know, I kind of, I, you know, and for me, it's like scoping out of possibility, you know, it's like, what if, like, you, like, I think I'm getting like a flashback of the first time I might got flat earth and I was like, what if we're in this section, right? And then you could go beyond it and you could just hop. Like we, we're on the continent of uh, North America and Canada, right? Then you can hop into Africa, just like they found, you know, in boats back in the day. What if you could actually traverse over this thing to a whole nother space? And then I think of the idea of like that movie, um, uh, The Hunger Games, and they divide the cities. Well, you might not know um, if, if that other better city existed, you know how they do all those dystopian movies. You wouldn't even know what exists. Like maybe we are in the crappy world, right. In this controlled one, but over here, there's like a, a better one and a free one that we don't have access to. Cause so yeah, there's, go, go a, there's a lot of stories about that. You know, um, maybe NASA isn't lying when they say they want to go to outer space and go to Mars because maybe Mars is in the outer space. We live in here. Okay. This is Antarctica, this ring, but maybe out here, is where Mars is the sun and Venus is the moon, okay? And if you model that with a dome, when you're in the dome, Mars and Venus, if they were suns and moons out there, look like a star inside of our dome. Very interesting stuff. And then there's another ring out here and some speculate, um, there's a guy named Martin Kenny, it's called the cosmic egg. And he says that he thinks that Jupiter and Saturn are the sun and the moon out there. So, Again, those are in the outer spaces across the Earth plane. All of the largest telescopes on Earth are in the southern lands, and they're not pointing up. They're pointing south. And south is every direction away from the middle, okay? So, you know, the North Pole is right in the middle here, and south is that way. South is also, like, how do I do this? That way. And south is that way. And south is also that way. Any way away from the middle is south. North is in the middle, and um, 
and east and west circle around the, the middle. Let me just show you real quick, because uh, some people have a hard time getting that. So yeah, if we look, if we, a lot of this stuff is going over my head. So I'm open. <laughs> like I can look it after. It's like, okay. Because again, the astrology stuff and directional stuff will, will here's the thing. It's it. way easier than you think that it, it's just, it, it really just makes so much sense. And it's not as complicated as, as, as it sounds. So here's the North. North is in the center. Um, can you see yep. what is going on? What, can you, you can see the app, right? Yep. All right. So North is in the center. And east and west are circles around the center. So if I wanted to go 270 degrees, I have to go, um, I have to stay equidistant from the North Pole and 270 degrees, which is west or 90 degrees, which is east, take me in a circle, just like that gold circle. And I can go all the way around the earth and come right back to where I started from. And I think because of my, because of my programming that I went around a ball, but in fact, I just went around the block. Okay. I went around the flat earth plane. I can also go from America, head north, 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 north. And then as I pass, as I pass the North Pole, I'm now going south, 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 and now I'm in Asia. Okay. And I went in a straight line, but nobody has ever gone from South America, gone south, and then popped up over in Australia or gone from New Zealand, gone from uh, Johannesburg, gone south, and then popped up over in, in, uh, in New Zealand. No one's ever done that, right? Mm. If it was a ball, everyone would have done it. Billions of people with a B, as Carl Sagan would say, have circumnavigated east and west. They've taken the northern shortcut going over the north, but no one's gone south and come off the other side ever, okay? Oh, That's got to tell you something. Hmm. Yeah. That's fascinating. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So um, – I want to get into the Bible verses, and then I wanted to get into, if you have them, I loaded up some because I remember going down these with a few people. And also your, like, if you were to say your top three uneffable proofs that anybody can understand and they have to go dispute it, be like, okay, you think the earth is round? Go prove these things. These are my three strongest um, arguments. Um, so... The, I mean, the three strongest arguments are, um, you know, water lays flat, the earth is 70% water, and we can see too far. There's a million observations we've done with lasers, with microwaves, with um, mirror flashes that we see entirely too far. We, we, th we see things that should be miles below curvature. And now with infrared uh, cameras and whatnot, we can see even farther. And it's absolute ridiculousness um, to, to say that the earth is uh, curved. And some people say, well, maybe it's a bigger ball. Well, even if it was a thousand times bigger, there would still be curvature and we can see too far. So that's number one. Number two is you can't have uh, the second law of thermodynamics says you can't have high pressure next to a vacuum or even high pressure next to low pressure without a physical barrier. So we live in a high pressure system and space is a vacuum. And uh, why doesn't space just suck all the air and equalize? And you know, the only answer that the ballers can give is uh, gravity. Well, gravity can be easily disproved with a straw. Take a straw, put it in your mouth, point it downward, stick it in water or just in air. And with the weak vacuum of your mouth and lungs, you can suck air and liquid up and away from Earth effortlessly. Well, if you can do that with your lungs, how come space can't do it? And the answer is because space is not a vacuum. Space is a lie. And there is something containing us here. And uh, is that good? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> okay. And uh, so I, I pulled up um, some, bi some Bible verses. I'm not the Bible guy. Okay. My co-host, Matt Long, his, uh, his um, Instagram and, and, and uh, YouTube is Woke Town, one word, Woke Town. And he does the greatest videos. But um, on the Flat Earth app, there's a button, the, one of the buttons on the web page is a uh, biblical flat earth proofs, huge list of amazing videos there. You could spend a week watching them and you'll be blown away. But um, the, on the King James Bible, 1 Chronicles 1630, the world also shall be stable that it be not moved. That's pretty interesting on a spinning wobbling ball in a Helios nonsensical system, that wouldn't make any sense. Palm 93.1, um, the world also is stabilized that it cannot be moved. Palm 9610, the world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Um, Palms 10104.5, um, who laid the foundations of the earth that it shall not be removed forever. And Isaiah 4022, it's he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Many ballers use that one, but I sit upon the circle of my table. 
I have a circular table and I sit on it sometimes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's 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 quite a few. And I, I thought that that was a very interesting correlation to, to have them in the Bible because it re references it a lot. And the other one um, it references as well as the firmament, basically like being in a dome. And I thought, oh, man, if we are in a dome, that's that's super trippy. And all these old alchemi alchemical images, you know, very famous of this guy kind of peering outside of the dome. And <clears throat> the thing that I know for sure is that we are not told the true history. You know, I've done some work with, um, you know, several Native American elders. And within a few generations, we have almost abolished all of their history through genocide and other horrific things. And we didn't do that to help them. Um, conquerors did that to have more control. So what if you had like what Rockefeller's been able to do to the medical industry, to the mm -hmm. uh, education industry, they're telling us what they want to know. So I'm skeptical of everything. And I only really kind of know the stuff I've experienced directly and understand. And beyond that, I've kind of got to trust somebody. The thing is, I really don't trust our uh, establishments one bit, because if I did, we wouldn't have 9.1 million people starving each year. We wouldn't have a huge human trafficking problem. And I wouldn't look on the TV having these buttholes lie to me all the time and are literally just there to be actors to do this horrendous stuff. Which one of these videos is real? So we have we have rocket ships landing on rafts. Is it the one on the right that's landing right now or the one on the left that's landing in those super rough seas over there? Are you there? trying to trick question me and say they're both not real? Of course not. They're both that's garbage. The one on the <laughs> left though, this is SpaceX. Yeah. This is an actual SpaceX landing. Now, I've there's a closer up video of this, but there's there's five to ten foot swells out there. You couldn't stand on that raft. Okay, without holding on to something. And this thing is landing in 20 to 30 knot winds, like on this raft, you know, it, the, the, that thing weighs like 40 tons empty and it's coming down a little bit of fire and these little milk crate fins is stabilizing it and making it land there. This is, a, I believe, from the 1950s, uh, a movie um, basically predictively programming us that this is going to happen in the future. And then they, here they are faking it right here. It's, it's nonsense. Yeah. Nonsense. And one of the things with NASA that, that clued in for me that was interesting, the, the NASA budget is extraordinary. Yeah. So if yeah. there were a group of people that wanted an extraordinary amount of income, be like, okay, we're going to go to space. You're going to give us hundreds of millions of dollars. $65 million you, dollars a day, a day, every day, without a break, no holidays. <laughs> is that what it is? Where it's do you find that stuff? $65 million dollars every single day. And, and what I'll say to people too, like it, I can tell you've done a ton of research just because of the eagerness to share all that stuff. And like, you know, it comes from somewhere. I think your app would be able to have, you know, be able to access these links to go verify for yourself. That's what people it, have to do. They have to go verify things right. for themselves. You got to disprove it for yourself. You got to actually do the work. People in general, same with the coronavirus stuff, they don't want to put in the time. So if you don't want to put in the time, just right. don't shame mock guilt or right. ridicule give them the time of day because just like religion right well, i went to the parliament of world religions well it's like in one way it's who's you know imaginary friend or you know santa claus or a leprechaun or whatever i know it's different i don't mean to be meaning to uh to be demeaning to people who are religious it just means that we haven't met them physically in this realm we don't know where their book we can have right. trust and we can have faith in that um but it is a story and, and like even you look at uh I don't know, with the one guy with the magic glasses, um, you know, you know that one, uh, Mormonism, it's got the magic glasses and he can read the book. Um, so, right, you can ridicule a lot of people. Like, I don't see that as any different than thinking that the earth is flat. And so you have to go down and then begin proving it or disproving yourself. And I have like, again, there's a secret person I can't say is a flat earther because they haven't come out yet, but they're highly intelligent. And they gave me this document that they put together after doing about, uh, probably four or 500 hours of research and it's very compelling. And I've just, this is how I know. Cause I, I started to browse through it. And this person is, is, is here's the thing. <laughs> here's, here's the thing. We don't know everything. We, there, there's so much that we don't know, but we know that we don't know people that yeah. believe in the globe don't even know the globe model. And they think the flat earth model is what the flat earth society is showing. I just put out a video where Obama and Jim Carrey mentioned flat earth a half a dozen times during their, their reign. Um, they, they mentioned the flat earth society because they want to drive people there. If you want to look into flat earth, people, you Google flat earth, 
It takes you to the Flat Earth Society. You Google images of Flat Earth and it's all images from the Flat Earth Society, a disc floating in a heliocentric universe. That's not what we believe. All of the information on the Flat Earth Society is nonsense. And if you end up going there in your research, you'll laugh at Flat Earth and you'll never look again because you know it's called a gatekeeping. It's a government controlled gatekeeping site. Here's a photo of the Earth from NASA. This is an official photo from 2012, right? First, it looks like a cartoon. You know why? Because it is a cartoon. But this is from NASA. This is a photo of Earth, okay? Nonsense. But if you look at it, that's what we're seeing. So all of the rest of that land is on the other side of that ball. Let that sink in. All of the land that's outside of this little circle here, which is showing you what land we're seeing here, okay? All of this, all of this, all of that land, all of it is on the other side of this ball. Right, okay, that's good. That, that makes no sense. Yep. Okay, so they can't even get their proportions right. When they, you know, they, they, they have two, they have two, their, their top two photos of Earth are this, okay? And here's the United States. It's half the size in this one. You know, and people say, well, it's the angle and the, the aperture, baloney. These balls are the same size. This is what they're showing. It, it's, it's nonsense. You know, you can explain the color away that, you know, whatever the lens, the exposure, um, you can make excuses all you want, but these are cartoons. You don't, we don't live on a cartoon. And by the way, everybody knew the earth was flat all the way up until the 1920s. Okay. We're told that 500 years ago, Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows proved it. Um, you know, I could show you how sticks and shadows proved the flat earth. Uh, but I interviewed a woman uh, named Ruth in January of this year uh, in an old age home. She's 102 years old. And I was talking to her about the world's fairs, which is a whole nother friggin' thing. The world's fairs are not what we were told. Um, I believe it's, it's the, 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 um, the, the last great reset, but Ruth was telling me detailed information about her fifth birthday party. I'm like, wow, she's 102. I don't remember my 20th birthday party. Okay. Let alone my fifth. And uh, I asked her, I say, Hey, Oh, where did you go to school? Elementary school. She told me the school. She told me the teacher's name. Um, I said, what did they teach you in science class about the earth? And she had, I never mentioned flat earth. And she goes, they taught me the earth was flat. She goes, but then they changed it a couple of years later. Okay. And then we found another woman who lived, grew up in Croatia. She was like 90 something. And she said in the 1930s, she was taught that the earth was flat in school and then they changed it. So they, you know, they, World War One, World War Two, all of these wars were to, to, to destroy the past advanced civilization that lived here on Earth and rewrite history and enslave us into this, you know, Rockefeller system, I call it. So, you know, if you look at every every, you know, civilization going back there, you know, as far as we can see, they all believed they all had flat Earth cosmology. Only NASA brought in the ball. You know, the the story of Aristophanes. Um, you know, you know what I'm talking about? We had the well and the sticks and the shadows and they, so it's a famous story and most kids know it because it's ingrained into their head and in, in the series Cosmos where he had a guy 500 miles away. And on a certain day uh, in Greece, the sun would shine all the way down a well. And uh, there, that means that the sun is directly above. And then the guy 500 miles away had a stick and the stick when pointing up at the same time would create a shadow. And he's like, oh, that's because the earth is curved. And then he did some geometry and figured out oh, how round the earth was. And he discovered um, within 2% of what size the earth was. That's the story. Famous mathematician. Nobody ever wrote anything about him until the 1980s, where he showed up in Rockefeller textbooks. Okay, because it's a fictional story. If I have two sticks on a flat table, okay, here are my two sticks. And I have a light above this one. There's no shadow, right? Because it's shining straight down, correct? Yeah. This stick with the light over here has a shadow, right? I can take the angles of that shadow and do a calculation and tell you how spherical my flat table is, okay? But that doesn't matter. We don't live in a math equation, right? That's all the glow proofs are. There's, there's four categories of glow proofs. Um, mathematical equations, lies, misrepresentations, and insults. That's it. Mm, mostly, in the insults. mostly insults. Mostly insults, right. Guys? And, you know, interesting you say uh, about the math, um, Clifford Mahoudi was was talking about how the math that he learned in school was very different than they were teaching just 10 or 15 years later. And he was a civil and environmental engineer for 40 years for the government. And, you know, basically what he's told me is it's like 
the new the new breed he's just like it, it's just been getting worse and worse and worse he's like they don't even know how to do simple math you know, it's like it's a total different system than we right. were taught. And and like I said, too, if you think about history, like just what I know from Clifford being 80 year old Zuni elder, um, he's got the Western world because he went through that type of schooling. And he's also got a Zuni history. Uh, but he watched from shoot, he'd probably be early 1920s or 1920s ish, you know, how all of that culture was destroyed super easily. So then, you know, what is it like? It takes one or two generations to um, to destroy a history or something like that. And if we look at what's going on now, as it got more and more ridiculous and I was like, oh my God, it's just going to keep getting worse. I'm like, you know, in one way, I kind of hope they say the coronavirus is six feet in the air because you're going to see most people crawling. And then one or two generations later, we'll forget that we actually walked and that's how afraid people are. They're just going to stay low and they won't even remember that they can do it. It just, it can actually happen that fast because the institutions are very good at creating obedient people. Do not question authority. And I had my aunt over and she's a, you know, a newfie, my mom and my aunt are newfies. And uh, they said as kids, he's like, you, you would never talk out about anybody in a uh, position of authority, never speak up back about a teacher or a lawyer, anything. You would actually get whooped by your parents. You never question anything. And that's a, that's a scary thing. We need to be questioning everything, especially when you look at the harm that's being done all around the world, you know, something is wrong. Like you can just, I remember being a kid and looking at it as like, something is wrong. Something is very, very wrong here. If there can be multimillionaires all over the world, but I'm looking at this starving kid each and every day on TV, starving to death. Rice is not very expensive. You know what I mean? It doesn't right. take that much money to uh, to sort out some rice for some people. So that's my rant there. Um, do you want to add in on something? Because I want to ask you a bunch more questions. <laughs> um, no, you can ask me more questions. We can talk about you know why why would they lie? Um, maybe you want to ask me how the sun sets on a flat earth. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I want to know the why. That's an important one. I want to know why yeah. they lie. You touched on a little bit the idea of the ancient civilizations, if they have any role, any of those histories, Egypt, there's, um, you know, apparently several thousand, quote unquote, sacred sites, which means we don't know how they build them or they're not telling us because we, we don't know. Like I was in Egypt and that construction and listen to the engineers they are like, we have no idea how this was done. This is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, if you look at even some of the buildings that you know are in every city um, across the world, there's you know they were built in the 1800s, 1700s supposedly. Um, you know they had horses and buggies back then, and they're building these castles with domes and towers. This is obviously a technology that we have no idea what it was. I, I believe they were free energy harvest harvesting buildings uh, that many of the <laughs> excuse me, many of the old churches um, were not churches to start with maybe they were healing centers or or something else so you know I, I have a church in my town there's like I, they wouldn't be able to build it today so oh yeah and you know it's interesting because it, absolutely that was one of the theories that they had in Egypt and there's a place called Saqqara and there's a documentary on it about on Netflix now but they have this wall and they called it the healing center and it's it's just a wall that goes you know a few hundred meters it might have been bigger at the time and it's got these squares that go in and they say, yeah, go put your head in the square. You're going to feel something. You don't need to meditate. You don't need to do anything. Everybody feels it. You stick your head into this square. This just is an open space square that you just go in and you can feel a visceral vibration going on. And you're like, what Amazing. is this? And yeah, yeah and in, in the underground tombs, they think that they're, they're built like uh, cells, like a, like a computer chip. And they, they, they had one stone in there. They're, they're like tons. They don't even fit. They're like, we measured the doorway to here. Like they don't even fit. We have no idea how they cut them down here with laser precision and then got them on top. There's not enough space. And yeah. we're looking at how much space you'd have to maneuver a crane or whatever. And they, they thought that they could potentially like electrify them and then move them around or like hover them or just make them, you know, buoyant to go up and down and left and right. If you looked at the story of the pyramids um, that – how they were built, they would have to harvest a stone, transport it and put it in place every, I think it's every two minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it is, it's ridiculous for 20 years, day and night without a break to build it. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 it's just insanity. It, it, you know, the building methods that they use back then were, were not done with millions of people or thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. It's all, it's all nonsense. Um, so just real quick, because a lot of people, I was looking at the chat and someone mentioned something about sunsets and it's always a big question. Um, 
and and it, there's a, a lot to it. The sun sets, the, the sun that we see first is, I don't believe it's a physical object. I believe that there's a, the, the true sun, and again, this is speculating, is above the firmament. And if you look in this model here, that, that's like a, that's a sun that's moving around inside this model. And all it is, is, you know, it's the, the true source of the sun, which is, it'll show you in a second, which is an iPhone, okay? It's just the light of a phone, uh, you know, a light above it. So perhaps the real sun is above the firmament and it's being projected into our reality. I don't believe that the moon is a physical object either. Now, I could be wrong. The moon could be something physical, but I don't think that there's big rocks floating in space. I think that everything in the lights, all the, all the lights that we see in the sky above are within the Earth system. And they may be projected, for lack of a better word. Like here is a star. Um, when we zoom in on it, this is the star... Um, Sirius, right? And uh, here is Capella. Is this Capella? I think. Um, yeah, that's that's the star Capella. That doesn't look like what NASA shows us. Okay, I filmed that. Um, what is that? That is the star Capella. When you oh, zoom wow. in on it, right? And this is the star. Um, this one is. Um, I forget which one this is. Is uh, Arcturus? Look at that thing. How, what did you film it with? A P900 super zoom camera, right? Now, the oh, P900 wow. is only 83 times zoom. The P1000 is 125 zoom, okay? You zoom in on these things, and this is what we're seeing, okay? These are, in my opinion, sentient in nature. Um, you know, if you wonder how astrology works, it doesn't make any sense in a heliocentric, you know, model where, oh, that planet is 25 million miles away, and it's affecting my life, or is that planet just above the clouds, you know, and it's sentient nature that, you know, it, it's energetic It's all electric and magnetic. Um, we live in this amazing system that when you really start looking at this stuff, it, it, it blows you away. <clears throat> um, so here's a, th this is a, this is what I call the sun fade out. So I, this is highly sped up and I, I have a drone up on a super clear day. Okay. The drone's up in the sky, and I, I watched over a five-minute period. The sun goes down, 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 and I'm gonna, it's going to show you. And it, goes, it comes right to this apparent horizon here, and then it sits there for 10 minutes. It stops going down, and then it just gets smaller and smaller. It never goes down. It's not going down. It's going away, and it just fades out into the thickness of the air. Okay, there it goes again, and it fades out. It's still there. I, come, I got it reverse here. It doesn't go down. And this line right here, which is that eye level, you know, the camera level, wherever, um, is not the ground. That's where the clouds and the ground merge together and we can't see the difference. Okay. That's our optical, uh, you know, the horizon isn't a physical place. It's a, um, it's a, an apparent position. And so as the, as the, um, the sun moves down, you know, moves away, it goes down, just like streetlights go down, 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 and they merge with the floor. I've been in a hotel in Vegas. The hallway is so long that if you're at one end of the hallway and you look at the other, the lights in the ceiling are touching the floor at the other end. But they're not. It's just perspective. So the sun appears to go down, and then it just um, fades out. But on a, on a thicker atmosphere day where there's clouds and stuff, it'll just go, if this is the cloud line, and here's the sun, and the cloud line is above, is way above your head, but in the distance, it, it's at your eye level. The sun just goes away and it sets like that. Okay, so if if we're if we're on the flat plane, right, and the sun is yep. moving around like so, wouldn't it be moving left to right or it's right moving, to left? It's, it's moving in a circle, um, as I showed you. So the sun goes around. You know, it's the hour hand on the clock. They they screwed us up by giving us the clock that goes around twice. If they put 24 hours on a clock, the hour hand is the sun and it moves around once a day and it's light can't make it all the way to the other side. Just imagine you're in a, um, a giant room, a big giant gymnasium. All the lights are out. It's pitch black and you take a, um, a you light a candle on one end of the floor. It's going to light up just that area of the floor and the other end of the room is going to be dark. It's not going to light up the whole room. Then put a layer of clouds in there. Right. And but you know the the sun that that candle can be above the clouds a little bit, but if you're on the ground on the other end of the gym, you're not going to be able to see that candle because all the clouds are the atmosphere is going to block any light, the visibility of the sun, and you're not going to be able to see it. 
Make sense? It does, Here's- but I, I guess I'm just under, yeah, because e- the east to west thing, like, because if it's going up and down, that the sun rises and it goes down. If it were flat, wouldn't it go left to right? Well, it doesn't matter. It just it, as it's coming by, you know, 20 miles away, it, it looks like it's on the horizon. Comes closer, it's over your head, and then it goes and it looks like it's on the horizon again. Okay, right. so it's making an arc just due to perspective. So here's here's a little experiment we did where we're moving this this candle away across the flat plane. This lens represents the atmosphere, and this is the camera that's filming it. Okay, it's going to show you in a second um, how that looks. But the if you watch. Here it is, and the, the cart's moving away. Hold on, it's zooming out here. And the sun will sink below this flat plane. Now, not that camera's not going down. It's going away. Hmm. It, it's just going away. And that's what happens. You know, the atmosphere, it acts like a, a lens. It's not a theory. It's a fact. It magnifies things. But things, as they go away, get smaller. So they're getting smaller due to perspective but it's also magnifying them. So it's, it's a crazy thing. When you look at anything over distance, um, it, it gets real fuzzy, you know, you get all sorts of distortion, you get compression. So um, you have to take all of that in, into effect. Right. That's interesting. Well, that's a, that's a, that video, I, I usually need a, a visual aid. That's yeah. a, a very visual learner. Um, yeah. Okay, so get, let's get into the why. Um, why, you know, I like I said, I have a, an understanding of why, but why would you go through all this trouble to? And that's a very fascinating thing you said about these um, these people in the 1920s. Do you have recordings of those people by chance? Or, I, I do. Uh, it's uh, on my channel. My YouTube channel is D I T R H. It's the initials for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. <laughs> and um, you just look in there and scroll down, or just search the channel for uh, Ruth, a uh, hundred and two year old Ruth. Um, it's there. It's been mirrored on a hundred channels. Just you can just search YouTube for uh, 102 year old Ruth Rat Flat Earth. It'll come up. That's pretty. That's pretty incredible. Like you know yeah. that you know teaching in the 19. That's something that 1920s. I didn't know. And, and when 19- you hear that, and then now I'm so curious about the damn World's Fair and what you said about the first reset. I'm like, god damn, probably because yeah. with enough influence and power, you can literally shape our civilizations. And this is this has happened. This is not something new. You know, I've only been on the planet 36 years, and so plain. Plane. Yeah, but yeah, been, on the plane. only been on this flat so, desk. So, so think about the timing of this. I uh, I couldn't believe it when Ruth told me that. I was like, wow. So then I came back and I'm doing all my podcasts and shows. And I'm like, everybody, if you have a family member or access to an old age home, I said, go find these people, these centenarians, people that are over 100 years old, um, and ask them because we only have a little bit of time left because they're all going to be gone because she was taught that when she was like five, six years old, seven years old. Um, so we only have a very short period of time. So all of a sudden people have got real excited. The, the video went viral and people are like, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to an old age home. I'm doing this. And then bam, next week, no one can go to old, old age homes. COVID hit. Okay? No kidding. COVID, and nobody can go. So this whole thing could be my fault. <laughs> Man, you'd be like the worst. If you, you'd be, imagine you were just like the total worst if you did that. Like you son of a gun. That's you know, they weren't going to roll this COVID thing out for another ten years, but they're like, Weiss figured it out. They're going to find all the, the, all of the old people. We must lock them down. I know you're Neo from the Matrix. It's just a way different. That's <laughs> yeah. So so let's talk about Neo from the Matrix and why it matters. Remember, if you remember the Matrix documentary, um, Neo was feeling <laughs> like it. something's wrong with the world, and he was at the beginning of the movie. He was like depressed, right? He was a depressed guy. Um, I believe that most depression is, comes from because we're here having our soul's journey. Our soul had a plan and someone took our minds with the television and, and the drugs and everything else and have diverted us from our soul's plan. And the farther you get away from your soul's plan, the more trouble you have, the more unhealth you have, the more um, distraught you become, the more depressed you become. And your soul knows what this place is. Your soul knows what's happening and had a plan for a lesson. And if you, you know, if you align with your soul, you're going to have a good life. You're going to have a good ride because this is a ride, right? And the, the definition of good, you know, some people will look at it like, oh my God, that's horrible. And the other person will be like, that's fantastic, you know? So it all, all depends on, on your view there. So um, if, uh, if you, you know, it, your soul wants you to know where you live, that you are at the center of creation. Um, whoever it is, and I, I say it's pure evil that came up with this. You can put a name on it, Satan, whatever you want, um, for the heliocentric um, solar soul lure system. They're luring your soul away. They want you to believe that nothing exploded, created everything, 
created an amoeba that turned into a fish that grew legs that found another fish that grew legs, had sex, had a monkey and had a retarded baby and it was a human, okay? I mean, that's what they want you to believe and that you're on this insignificant spec spinning out of control through an infinite universe where there's trillions of other specs and at best there's, no, uh, there, there's, there's either no God or at best a distant God. When the truth is we are at the center of creation. We are here protected. Uh, this place was made for us. We're having, uh, um, you know, this incredible place that we're, that we're in where, you know, at, at God's creation, you know, they don't want us to know that. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people that have found uh, the creator and have found their soul's journey and are doing pretty well. And they, and they believe we live, they live on a ball because they've never really addressed it. Okay. But this is God's creation, this place. And we should respect it. You know, they teach us, you know, Hey, respect the earth, you know, be, um, be, be good and don't litter that that's respect. But if you don't really understand what this place is, you're not really respecting it. You can take care of it the best that you can, but the earth is much more than just an ecosystem. This, this is an amazing, you know, gift to humanity. And um, I don't believe that we can live off of the earth. I don't believe, I don't believe that people can live, um, you know, at, at, in space or even you know, nearly, I don't think space exists, uh, exists. You know, there was, there was um, um, test pilots back in the sixties and seventies that told stories that when they went to these incredible heights, um, they were seeing through their eyes, they were passing out, they were losing consciousness. They were that all sorts of weird stuff was happening. I believe that, you know, to, to live, we need to be connected to this electrical earth that we are on because we're electrical beings, you know, and we can only get so high before um, the shit starts falling apart. So the, the bottom line is, as I'm all over the place, is, the, <laughs> is they're hiding the creator because if everyone woke up tomorrow, it, and by the way, before I knew the earth was flat, I was, I was best described as an atheist, okay? Uh, that I didn't believe in any God and I believed in evolution and everything. And then when I discovered the earth was flat, I was like, oh my God, there's, there's a creator. You know, whatever you want to say the creator is, that's up to you. That's your, that's your own journey. But this place was created, okay? Some people say aliens created, you can say whatever you want. This place was created for us. We are at the center of creation. We are powerful spiritual beings and they don't want us to know that our thoughts create our reality. They want to control our thoughts with fear, lack, uh, you know, doom around every corner. You know, there's going to be nuclear bombs, which is not true. There's I heard about be... that one. That's a new one for me. Someone said nuclear bombs aren't true. Hey, hold, yeah. I got, I got a piece. Go Talk All about right. nuclear bombs or show some video. I'll be back in like two seconds. Because right. I'm like, I'm trying to pay attention. It's like, I got to pee. I got to be right back. This is good. Hold on. Yeah, nuclear bombs aren't real. Like what? Here, start start going. Talk about that. Oh, my okay. God. Nuclear <laughs> bombs. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, dear. Go ahead. Um, so nuclear bombs, people are like, what about, you know, what about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? You know, those, those, you know, that's what, that's what we believe in. And the couple videos that we've seen, when we're in school, remember the video of the house blowing up and the trees bending over backwards? That's still on YouTube. Go find it. Look at it again with a 2020 vision, and you'll realize that it's just a little claymation model, um, and it's complete nonsense. But um, three days after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the businesses were open. People were selling flowers on the street. The trains were running. That doesn't sound like a nuclear bomb. All of the buildings that had fireproofing, um, they, did not, they did not get knocked down. It was a incendiary bomb. Yes, there was a ground zero, but there's also video of them stockpiling TNT there, like in a massive pile of TNT, okay? So, but I don't know if you heard, I, I said, you know, three days after the, the Hiroshima, the stores were open. They were selling flowers on the street. The trains were open. People were going back to work, okay? People, plants and animals and people are thriving there. There's more cancer in the United States than there is there, okay? It's all nonsense. You know, nuclear bombs are just to scare the crap out of people. You know, the intercontinental ballistic missiles don't exist. Yes, we have Tomahawk missiles. I don't know how far they can go, but they can't go, you know, ac across the entire earth. They can go a certain distance and they can be used to blow up little things. But there's no such thing as a nuclear bomb. Okay, dang. All right. So uh, new rabbit hole. Okay. What do you think? One of the things that I heard about this is this one really tripped me out. It's kind of a side note, but someone was with the first time that I got flat earth, they said, you know, it's because the negative ETs that are here, they come from underground and it's talking about the reptilians. And if you look at the uh, Sumerians and I actually went to a museum in 
Germany, and I can't remember what civilization, well, Sumeria, and they have these kind of like lizard things holding a pine cone, right? In It's carved in stone, and these are thousands of years old. And so you don't just carve random things, you know what I mean? And you look at the Sumerian kings list, and and so there are references to these things. And so I'm like, hmm, that, that's a very fascinating idea. Underworld, you know? underworld civilizations make a hell of a lot more sense on a flat earth than they do on a spinning globe filled with lava, okay? Yeah, and so they'd say, you know, they make you think that they came from space, but they actually came from from they, Earth. They and they're, could. They're they, they're, they're, I believe that there's probably other realms below us, but again, I can't get there. I mean, there's all sorts of tunnels. You know, we know about cities underneath the ground, the whole mud flood thing. But who knows what's below us? You know, the nobody knows because the deepest hole ever dug is short of eight miles, where they hit an impenetrable barrier, and they can't get through it, no matter what they do. They've tried for years, so. Saying we know what's below eight miles is nonsense because we didn't know what was in the first eight miles as we dug. We were wrong every step of the way when they're like, oh, there's no more water. Oh, we hit water. You know, whatever it was, they, they didn't know. They got through the skin of the apple and they think they know what's in the core. Right. Well, so, yeah, so, again, I think there's a dome above us and maybe above that is another realm. I don't know. OK, but, you know, and then beyond Antarctica, as I was showing with that other map, um, that that could be, you know, alien extraterrestrials. They come from the extra terra. Here's some extra territory. So, and all they do is they can fly on a conventional plane and land in Australia. Yeah, and that that would make that would make reasonable sense. You know what I mean? Like, okay, that that seems plausible. You know, if we're not spinning in this ball in outer space at God knows how fast. Um, <clears throat> Oh, yeah. So I was, what I was going to say is um, Robert Grant, he was on the show recently. I was with him in Egypt, a really brilliant mathematician. And one of the things he said on his latest excursion, they went underneath the Sphinx. And he said that it opened up to this like massive underground, like there was stories high under underneath. Like, And he's like, you could see the stairway. And it was this huge, massive opening of this whole underground scenario. And they've only excavated a small portion underneath the uh, pyramid, the plateau, only a very tiny portion. They won't let people go down there. And that's where most of the stuff is. And so why would they close that, that off? And if you look at anything with secret societies or even um, Satanism and Luciferianism, one of the guys that I've kind of looked a little bit more into his work recently is Mark Passio, because he he's fascinating Mark's in the great. sense that he had, uh, you know, was a former priest in the church of Satan and talking about these, these uh, you know, Luciferian sins and, keeping the knowledge and letting other people go, you know, be stupid. And if you look at the all seeing eye and all of those different things, if you have the knowledge, then you have more power over other people. It's the same thing in, in martial arts and jujitsu and, and, and hand to hand combat. If I know what I'm doing, I have power over you. So that's, that's a special power, right? If everybody that it, like, that's basically what war was, you know, or the Spartans, they had this effective fighting, they had power, they could protect themselves with knowledge, you share that with someone else, it gives them power. So what levels of knowledge do, you know, the city folk or the quote unquote sheep like us, like have access to? And the thing is, most people are really happy to live in their reality and not question everything. And in, in very much the same way, I feel like Neo, where as long as I can remember, I'm like, something is messed up with this place, people are going around, like nothing is wrong, like completely ignoring all of this evil stuff, something is happening and every time i peeled back a rabbit hole around health around food around war around school around media around music i could find evil pure honest awful evil and alex sakara has been on the podcast and he wrote a book he does a skeptical podcast so you know but interestingly we were we were turned germ there and he goes that's flat earth science and i was like well have you ever been flat earth like how do you how do you know and i was like i i'm willing to admit, I don't know much about anything. Right. And so unless you, I'll listen to both, I, I'm totally fine with my own humility and what I know, and you can think whatever you want. But, you know, I think a lot of people have this like notion that they know, I don't, I don't know. They we've, they we've been brainwashed to believe that we have a thousand globe proofs and that there's zero flat earth proofs, but the opposite is true. Okay. I can show you experiment after experiment, observation after observation that show that the earth is flat and stationary. Every single scientific experiment that's done through history to prove that the earth is spinning or curved has failed and it didn't show any curvature and it showed zero motion. It showed the opposite of what they were trying to prove. So they went in biased to prove it was spinning and came out flat. And that's when they stuck Einstein in to bring in the stupid relativity nonsense and get rid of the ether. And, uh, 
it's all about control, um, control that way. So, so what's the, yeah. What, do, what do people say now? What's the best truth, uh, that the earth is, uh, spinning? What do, what do they say? <clears throat> you said you're a moron. Get out of your mother's basement. That's the number one proof. Okay. <laughs> the other one is, uh, where did you get your degree? So they're submitting their common sense to supposed authority. Um, you know, the other thing is they always point up at the lights in the sky, you know, the moon, the moon is round, therefore the earth is round. And I say, well, go look up at the, at the stars, uh, look, look at the lights in your ceiling and tell me what shape your floor is. See all of these balls, all of these moons. Well, that one's a cup, right? Is the next one, which one is that? Is, is this one a ball? Nope. It's flat. All right. Is this one a ball? Nope, it was convex. So we're looking up at the sky. We don't know how big something is. We don't know anything. We don't know what it's made of. That's the only one that's a ball. So right? what do you think? What do you think the moon is or the planets are? Again, it's all speculation. I, I don't, you know, when the when the moon goes to a new moon, which is no moon, right? When it, you know, it gets it's waning, 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 and then there's no moon. There's no moon for over 40 hours. Nobody <laughs> has been able to spot the moon um, after it goes noon, after it goes new for over 40 hours, okay? For over 40 hours, that's almost two full days. No, they haven't been able to get it from this, the International Fake Station. They haven't been able to do it from a, um, a high-flying aircraft, from mountaintops, from wherever. No one's been able to see it. No matter what kind of camera, you can use infrared camera. No one's been able to see it. So we have a full moon here, by the way, which is lit up like from edge to edge. If it was a single source light lighting a sphere, it would be a hot spot and then it would fade out to the edges. But this is lit from edge to edge. So if you go out on a full moon or near full moon night away from the city lights, um, the moon is so bright you can read by it, right? Yes? Yeah. The moon's so bright it casts your shadow on the ground. You could see your shadow on the ground from the moonlight, right? Right? This is a yep. fact. This is a theory. So... They tell us the moon is a dusty, dirty rock that's reflecting sunlight this fucking bright that it can travel 238,000 miles and I could read by it. Okay. That's insanity. And if you get into the inverse square law of light and how light, you know, because light as it travels gets dimmer and dimmer um, exponentially, it would have to be so bright that them standing on it, it would be as bright as the sun almost. But it's not. It's a dusty, dirty ball is what they show us. So the earth is much shinier than this dusty, dirty ball. It has water, you know, it has, you know, it's just shinier. It's six times larger too. So how come when there's a new moon, the whole lit side of the earth is facing the new moon. How come the earth shine doesn't light up the moon so we can see it? It's six times brighter, much, six times bigger. It's much more reflective. How come the earth shine doesn't light up the moon? Because the moon shine lights up the earth, but the earth shine doesn't light up the moon. I don't believe that the moon is actually even there. When there's a new moon, I don't think there's any moon, okay? I don't think there's any moon at all. So again, the moon is the biggest mystery. Well, it, now the moon clearly affects people's moods, attitudes, women's reproductive cycles, um, right? You with me? You agree, yep. you agree with that? Yep. So I don't see how a rock in space could have that effect, right? My, my you know, there's lots of... Um, you know, people that have talked about where they believe that the moon is, has something to do with the delivery and the removal of souls on Earth. I don't know. Moon's okay. a big mystery. Well, that's an interesting one. Do you know anything about eclipses? Because um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't speak about it on the podcast or publicly, only to friends. Because, uh, and I'm not going to now. I'll just say that I went to the eclipse um, in Oregon. Yeah. And I observed something as nobody was looking. Nobody was looking at the eclipse. Um, you know, they had the little glasses on. Um, I'll just say that I had a way to observe. And <clears throat> what I observed changed how I thought about everything ever. <laughs> it just it just changed everything. I could tell you more about what actually happened um, off air if you want. But it changed Everything I thought about astrology, about planets, about where the hell we are, about life. It was one of those game changing things. And I was like, oh, my God, no one else is seeing this. What the hell am I looking at? Yeah, I, uh, I observed that same eclipse without glasses staring right at it. Um, besides my eyesight getting better after that, um, the 
the what I saw was, was crazy. I mean, it, it was like it was like chaos in my eyes. But um, I don't know what the eclipse is, but I'm trying to pull up a video and YouTube has just made a change where I can't pull up my regular playlist that easy. Um, um, talk for a minute while I uh, try to figure this out. <laughs> well, one of the things I want you to go into, so yeah, that's that's a wild thing. So maybe it was something similar. I don't want to advocate for people doing anything out of their own, own risk, but uh, I hear a lot of stories, but it was an interesting experience. Uh, I had, I had a, an impulse in my inner world and thought if nobody was here, what would I do? And I chose to do that for the entire eclipse. And it was a very transformational experience. Yeah. You know, you know how, you know, that something special about the eclipse. Um, what does the government tell you and offer you free stuff for? They, it, they say, whatever you do, don't look at the eclipse. Right, you'll go blind. <laughs> you'll be. How many people have gone blind from the eclipse? Do you, uh, eclipses. Don't you think if you could go blind from looking at the eclipse, we'd have thousands of people every eclipse going blind? Right. You tell someone not to look at something, they're going to look at it. Right. <laughs> no one goes blind. They don't want you looking at the eclipse because I think that there's a data transfer there that's going on that's that's beyond what what um you know, most people will, can realize here. I got a, I got a video. Is this the right one though? Um, hold on. Hopefully the next one's people don't hear that. The next one's too bright. They get smoked. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, I, uh, I'll say that that's a plausible theory, you know, we'll speak more yeah. about it after. Right. So they, you know, they're, they're giving out free eclipse oh, viewing glasses. glasses. Yeah, the fleet. I know it didn't make any sense to me. I was like, if yeah. I, if not, nothing made sense, you know what I mean? And that was like, you know, a test. So again, I don't want to go too far into it to advocate too much, but yeah, everyone's got these little glasses. I was like, if I were like, what did uh, indigenous people do at this time? Did they look away? Like maybe, you know, if I think that if you stare at it too long or even just je the sun generally, you can sear out your eyeballs. Like uh, it's probably possible. You want to exercise thought, but, but maybe not. And I feel like it's, it's like Wim Hof being able to withstand the cold. You know what I mean? There's, right. there are, um, levels to what people are capable of or the Shaolin monks, you know, they punch brick full, full force. You know, there, there are, um, stages and you got to earn certain levels of abilities in this right. game of whatever it is. All right. So let me, let me give you, um, can you, you see my screen? You see my eclipse video? Yeah. All right. So on the right is the actual eclipse that I was looking at in the sky. I had a little bit of, uh, chemtrail smog in it so it actually helped in viewing and so we see the eclipse happening and uh on the left it showed um I'll go back a little bit this is my recreation of an eclipse i'm using a paper towel and i'm using a sun the paper towel represents the sky and then this the projector the sun the source was behind the paper towel so here's the actual eclipse and this is a some this is a um a video that someone took out west somewhere and you see this little locked in this little eclipse happening here and then you have this this is a lens flare um because it's one that's flipped and it's moving around but this one is you see my mouse right yeah this one's locked in position next to the sun and that is about the amount the the eclipse was actually happening lower right time. I, I realized last time with robert grant people don't know where the mouse is only i can see it so the mouse is uh just bottom it, right ish it'll it'll it actually i have some arrows coming up okay. but the bright sun that's actually the eclipse at the same amount but it's just blown out because it's so bright we're seeing a ball but in reality the eclipse is that little crescent that, that's actually happening you with me yeah okay so what is that and we're like is that a lens flare and my my speculation is that is the actual source of the sun outside or within the, the firmament, okay? So I recreated it. The paper towel represents the sky, which is the screen that we see things on. And so there's outside of the firmament, there's the source of the sun, and I have my new moon coming in um, and projecting onto the sun. And you don't see the moon approach or exit the face of the sun because it's not really there. It's just blocking the sun. You with me? Okay. So if that moon was half lit, you would see a half lit moon on the paper towel, right? Mm -hmm. But because it's not lit, there's nothing to project into our reality. So um, that was my first experiment. But then I realized, hey, if I have a thinner towel, and now I went with tissue paper, and I did the same thing again, look at that thing right there. That little, there's that little crescent. 
And that is we're looking through the paper towel and seeing the source of the projection. The projection is the big sun on the left. And this right here is, is the source. And so I'm saying that perhaps that is the source. You with me? So you're so you're basically suggesting in this experiment that the sun would be a projected light source or energy source on the other side of a firmament, and the Correct. firmament would be the paper towel in this experiment. Right, and the firmament. Well, no, the the the, the paper towel in the experiment is the is the sky. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually just the sky. So, um, you know, it's being projected into us. So, you know, if you remember the the um, the little model I had up earlier, which is this, um, there's the sun that's inside and that's the sun that we see this little, this little dot. And if I actually eclipse that light, you know, in half, that sun would turn into a half sun, right? If I eclipse the light up here, that sun inside on our, in our world would get eclipsed. If I had another light up here, a, a half lit moon, that half lit moon would be in, in there. Well, it's interesting that uh, it produces the exact same effect, the exact, you know, and there is references to firmament in the Bible, in these ancient yeah. alchemical texts. Um, the fact that you're talking about these old, you know, these hundred year old ladies talking about being taught the flat earth. Yeah. Um, all of that's super compelling, knowing that right now, I think that we live in a Luciferian uh, a, where evil people run the world. And I think that because 9.1 million people starved to death, I've looked very much in depth in uh, some of our history, uh, his systems in the world, and they're very evil. And the just by the definition of Rudolf Steiner, Anything that seeks to restrict their bind by definition is Luciferian. If this world made half a sense, like, uh, you know, Atlantis or like, I don't know what we could imagine a society where people were cooperative and respectful and peaceful and um, helpful and all the great things of humanity, it would not be what we're in now. It's total uh, manipulation, crap show, distraction, uh, you know, black magic. It's just it's just crazy how. It's just crazy how, you know, really evil what is going on. And with the eclipse, one of the things that I observed that changed my view on everything is as the I was going over, right? You, everyone was fine to watch then. And then um, it started to change. And basically what I saw was a tube of light, like a like a flashlight shoot across the sky like you were holding a, the brightest flashlight of all time. It shot across the side, and, and then what happened was reality, like almost like a like one of those cosmic Mayan calendar type of deals. I could see this um, mandala in the thinnest layers create reality once again, one at a time, being like like in infinite layers. And I was like, what? And there are other things that happened too, and it was like. You know, I was like, I don't know what this means. Maybe it is nothing, but I think that whatever that marker was, was some sort of special marker. And um, yeah, so it was really profound. So go ahead. So, you, you know, people say, well, how do you, how do you predict, you know, those heliocentric model predicts flat um, eclipses? No, it doesn't. Um, they've been predicting um, eclipses for thousands of years. You know, the anti cathera mechanism, which was discovered in the ocean off of Greece, um, is a clock that shows that the eclipses run in an 18 year and 11 days, I think an 18 year cycle. Um, and then they repeat again and again and again, like a perfect clock. The eclipses mm. are part of the sky clock. Mm. Okay. If we lived in a crazy universe spinning, you know, like they tell us all of those gravities would be yanking on each other and the whole thing would just become a crazy angry beehive and nothing would ever repeat. And, you know, the, the, and there's a YouTuber called taboo conspiracy, a great flat earther, um, and he says, the way you know that the number one proof we don't live on a spinning ball is we'd all be dead. Okay. We'd all be dead if the earth was a globe, period. We couldn't live on a, on a spinning ball. Um, so eclipses repeat every 18 years. Just let that sink in, right? The sky is a clock. You know, we're, we're just trying to figure it out. And it's, it's, turn, it, it's talking about seasons and, you know, days, seasons, um, years, uh, we're, we're coming up on December 21st is a, the changing of a, a, a completely new cycle we're going into. There's a big planetary alignment. Um, you know, check out uh, um, Crow 777 Radio. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Yep. Um, awesome podcast. And he talks a lot about that. Anybody, that's what I wanted to say. Um, 
if you want to, if you're still reeling about no nukes, Crow has a, a couple of uh, episodes. If you just go to Crow Triple Seven, Crow with two R's, C R R O W seven 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 Radio dot com, and search for um, for no nukes. Uh, there's a couple episodes there, and all you got to do is listen to one or two of those, and then you will know there's no nukes. So okay, so what well, what I wanted to what I want to ask is, oh, I kind of want you to go back and how does being a flat earth, like understanding the flat earth, like why does that make you believe more in a God or, or a creator? And, 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 and does it give you like a sense of uh, spirituality in, in some sort of way? Like, what is it that, that made that happen exactly? Well, you know, I, I never, I looked at all religions, you know, throughout my life and I just never bought into it. And, um, you know, I have all sorts of problems with it. And I just, you know, believed what they were teaching me in school, evolution and, and all the nonsense. Um, the, you know, the heliocentric, you know, um, system, it, you know, the soul lure system. I say that they're trying to lure our soul away, you know, Satan or whatever, or whoever, pure evil. Um, so why, why does flat earth make me believe in God or creator? Because we're not a random speck that happened by accident where this is a clearly designed, um, for lack of a better word, magical place. It's not an accident. There's a designer. OK, and that designer can best be described as God. I don't know a better word. I dig it. I like it. And so does this does this make you what do you feel about free will in that kind of environment? Or? Oh, I believe that we have total free will. Otherwise, we'd all be dead right now because the Luciferians that are running this place, uh, if they could just kill us. They would. Um, but they have to get our permission. Right. You know, if you look at all of the, you know, the people in Hollywood and, and government, they've all sold their souls. You know, they're they're toast. Um, the, the, the soul lure system, they're trying to steal our soul. So you don't want to sell your soul. Your goal here on this ride that we call life on earth is to maintain control of your soul. That's it. Don't lose control of your soul. Harmonize with it. Don't sell it. Don't let other evil spirits enter your body and take control. Okay. Don't let them hijack your soul. And that's it. It's easily done because you don't lose control of anything unless you willingly give it away. So if you're home going, oh, my God, the corona is going to get me global warming. We're going to run out of fuel. Uh, what do I do? You know, and they're like, oh, here, you know, government's like, here, let us you know, inject you and let us do this and let us do that. If you say yes, you've lost part of your soul. You've lost part of your divinity. OK, they want to turn us into automatons. You know, this vaccine very well might disconnect you, make you unable to connect spiritually, may shut down your third eye more than the, the fluoride that they inject into us, you know, and every, every way they can um, is calcifying our pineal gland. They, they, the goal is to um, take over our souls. So I think... Did that, did that answer the question? I'm spinning a little bit. No, I, you know, I'm, I actually agree with everything you said there. I, I pulled up this Rudolf Steiner quote, and I got to read more of his books, but he, he has this quote that says, I have told you that the spirits of darkness are going to inspire their human hosts in whom they will be dwelling to find a vaccine that will drive all inclination towards spirituality out of people's souls when they are still very young. And it's, I think that, um, when I was talking about Alex Sakaris earlier, the skeptical podcast, I forgot to mention that the reason why I brought him up was he wrote a book, Why Evil Matters, How Science and Religion Flubbed a Big One. And the big thing to understand is that there are people here that really are causing a ton of harm and they want the worst for you. And the, as much as you obey, they will they will do. And what you shared there about, um, you know, the the point of being on earth is to to keep and protect your soul. I feel like that's maybe one of the best and most basic ways to describe the human experience and what it means to remain uh, spiritually congruent or connected. And, you know, when each and every circumstance, like doing that thing in your gut that you, you know, is correct, like keeping your soul as given, you know, as I interviewed on a podcast and I was doing some coaching with some people and just kind of talking about that. And in the times in my life where, somebody would do something that was not congruent. Now, definitely I've sinned. I can assure you I've done a lot of things that I am not proud of um, and I'm not perfect, but there are other times where, you know, when I was clear enough and knew what the right thing was to do, you know, I made that choice and it can be very, very challenging and we don't want to give our minds to other people. And we don't want to give our, our spirits to other people. And we don't want to, especially if they don't have the, our best interest at heart. And so 
what I would love for you to chime in, but I want to ask, like, do you, what do you think about like, kind of like spirits or other beings or things like that? Do you think that plays a role in all this? Absolutely. I mean, I, my understanding is we have a main soul and then we have a whole family of souls inside our body and they, they come and go and they do their things here. Um, and your main soul, I think can only leave your body. This is my belief. Um, when you're sleeping, when you're in a deep sleep and then it has to be turned before you reanimate. Um, and whatever, I don't know what it does when it's outside of your body, you know, that's maybe when you have an out of body experience or, or whatever. So, you know, when you have that horrible feeling in your stomach, I think that's your soul talking to you like, Hey, you're, you're, don't do that. That's not good. And they're trying to steer you, you know, they're trying to, you know, but you have, again, back to the free will, we have total free will. That's the psyop is they don't want you to believe that you have free will. They can't do anything to us. So, you know, the constitution doesn't give us our rights. It just tells us what our God given rights are for those people that don't realize that we have free will. They can't take it from us. Um, evil spirits can only enter you when you allow them to, right? All you have to say is no, no, thank you. You're not allowed in here. Go away. I do not give you permission. You know, all the vampire movies, they have to ask permission to come in. They're telling you that they, <laughs> these, <clears throat> vampiric entities can't enter you unless you welcome them in. They can trick you, they can fool you, but uh, they won't, you know, they, they, they can't enter or affect you unless you um, let them. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Yeah, I've heard that from many d different people and it makes sense because if you look at predictive programming and you look at even what's going on in the world today with current events and what people actually say publicly, they actually, ha I think it's part of this, this, messed up rules is they literally have to tell you what they've done or what they're doing. So my question for you would be, I'm looking at stuff. I'm sure you see the plan with Klaus Schwab. He wrote a book on this. We we know what they want to do, put a chip in our arms. You know, a friend of mine that I'm, I'm coaching, she's like, Hey, did you know, um, you know, about this vaccine? Oh, six, oh, six, oh, six. I'm like, are the chip in the Bill Gates chip? I was like, yeah, I've been telling you about that. Like, so right. if we want to, uh, you know, we're kind of in this slave debt money system. Right. And so how do we remain honorable, but provide for our family? Because we need the slave tokens to, um, go get the money to make the good choices, right? People are like, well, I got to eat, man. I, no, I got I gotta... it. I, I, I got it. And, and it's not easy. But the, the, the answer is first, we have to start to migrate away from their system. Um, a lot of people don't like cryptocurrency, but you know, I like cryptocurrency a little bit. I, I try to trade in cryptocurrency and, uh, and, and, and real money, which is, you know, silver and gold. Um, I also um, try to trade with people. I try to barter with people. Um, I make an amazing hot sauce. I make a, a couple hundred bottles of hot sauce every, every year. But I love I hot sauce. I refuse to sell it. I'd rather give it away or I'll trade it. Okay. You know, I trade, I, I, I'll trade it. I actually have our local little diner has my hot sauce on their, on their counter. I, I give it to them just, just for fun because it actually has my flat earth clock label on it. So people are get, eating hot sauce, having eggs, and they're turning into flat earthers. They don't know it. <laughs> but one guy at the restaurant wanted the hot sauce. And, uh, and it, it's like, it, the guy's like, Hey, this guy wants to contact you. He wants to buy hot sauce. I'm like, it's not for sale. I said, but I'll trade it. He's like, what for it? I'm like, I don't know. What do you got? Well, the guy's <laughs> got a 65 foot yacht. He's going to take us out on the yacht. Hey, that's worth a bottle of hot sauce, <laughs> right? Comes with cocktails and food too. So yeah, again, trade with your friends, find a network of people and offer your services to each other and get out of the dollar, right? Cause the dollar is going to be useless in less than two years. Uh, if not two months, it's going to, you know, it's gonna, you're going to need a thousand dollars to buy a loaf of bread if you can find one. Jeez. So what do you think we should, well, with that, what do you think we should do? What I think we should, we should do is, is really start connecting with the earth again. If you don't know, if you have um, 10 square feet of fertile soil, grow a garden. Okay. I don't care where you are. If you get sunlight and soil, build a, a bed, fill it with dirt, learn how to grow food because you, because that's, you know, connecting with the earth. Um, again, figure out a network, you know, the, the entire, with this whole COVID shutdown, they're getting rid of all small businesses. So, you know, many people that still have jobs aren't going to have jobs. Um, you got to find something that you can do that works. You know, we, we need to get into, you know, groups of people, you know, we have a, a the, the flat earth community is an amazing group of people, you know, uh, they're all awake to the COVID nonsense. They're all awake. You know, there's lots of people awake to the COVID nonsense, but all the flat earthers are awake, which is amazing. There's something about when you know where your feet are planted, you can all of a sudden see everything else. It, it just, you know, 
again, be awake, be kind, help, be charitable, um, do the best that you can do. Again, it's a scary time, you know, like, cause money, you know, money, you know, they have us, we're in a spiritual war, right? Just so you know this, right? And what do they, have they trained us to worship? Number one, above God. What have they trained us to worship? Money? The, do the dollar. Yeah. Okay. And if you look at the $1 bill, which they haven't changed, they changed all the other stuff for 9-11. That's a whole nother story. It has so many devil worshiping signs on it and everybody worships the dollar. Okay. So this is a, the, a dollar is just an exchange of energy, right? We need to get away from that. We need to get away from that. If you have some money, you know, there's so many people that hate cryptocurrency. I think it's a way away from the dollar um, that, that could help take them down. You know, they, they, the government doesn't like crypto because they see that, it, you know, if people switch to crypto, they lose all their power. Well, it's get yeah, you're right. It's getting off all of those systems. Like, you know, I got I got deleted from Facebook and my Instagram got deleted. I'm on YouTube right now, but they're starting to give me strikes. And so I'm putting everything in house and inviting, you know, people to to come onto the platform that I have. It's in Kajabi. But you know, if you're listening to this, go there because they, they apparently even they're getting MailChimps and things like this. And it's so crazy the level of censorship, but we gotta not use those platforms. If all the users right. get off, like library is is going up there, uh, Telegram, yep. Parler, and then they have the psyop out there too about, oh yeah, and the evil people too. I want to say this about the Luciferian stuff. This it's unfortunate. Like this is this is uh like again, good to go back to Alex Sicarius saying like why evil matters how science and religion flubbed a big one it's this massive cognitive dissonance of evil and it's why they're able to run amok is because we're not addressing that and even in the church of uh satanism and luciferianism that's kind of what they teach you they want to do that through solipsism you know and some of the new age stuff is like not look at this to not participate to not stand up to do anything um you know the generations of um you know making masculinity bad and wrong you know what i mean it's just like well now we we don't have people who are courageous to stand up to something that they see is wrong. And when you look at, when I did work with the International Tribunal of Natural Justice, like this stuff give you nightmares, but the numbers and the atrocity and what is being done, this needs to stop. So I want to ask your opinion on how do you see things trending with all your work? What do you think we should do? And then as a side note, um, you know, what do you think about Elon Musk? Because a friend <laughs> sent me this stuff and he goes, she, he's married to Grimes, right? If you look at Grimes' uh, videos, she is an, just such an overt Satanist, uh, flesh and blood, livid dreams. Genesis is sick. Uh, we appreciate we appreciate it. it's all sick it's all it's all super sick eating eating stuff it's, who is grimes grimes is uh, elon musk's wife or okay. the one that I had the baby with and so we you know he sent me this thing because we've had some interesting experiences together and uh, just called a succubus it's this woman that maybe influences him maybe he was evil before i don't know maybe he's evil now i don't know maybe he's the greatest guy ever i don't know but i look at the videos you're putting out in the world and i know what they're doing and i know what they mean even like um the two two of the three people in black lives matter um the heads i forget their names the agarza or something i watched some of the video and and they did this satanic ritual um which was really disturbing and, and maybe we could talk about this i don't know that that hydron collider did you see the satanic ritual that was recent oh in, my like, god this, incredible that, that was and, recent, the, and the right? gothard tunnel right you, you know that that one too yeah the, the underworld the, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it was so like, it's just so sick. And so you can't watch that. Well, you could, it's people's cognitive dissonance is insane, but you yeah. watch it and you just, you're like, Oh, it's like, Holy, you have to wake up to that. And then once you do, it's absolutely terrifying, but I think we need more people to wake up so we can then nullify it so we can right. do something about it. And so many people's solution is just to ignore it, to go about their day, to really just shackle themselves into this system that doesn't support life. Right. right? It's not right. life affirming. Yeah, it's uh, the the whole thing with the tunnel and the um, held hadron collider. Um, they have the Shiva is the statue that's outside there, right? The goddess of war. Um, what's going on there isn't what they're saying. I don't know what's going on there. It, it it's it's insane. You know that there's another collider on uh, the tip of Long Island. Um, I think I forget the name of it, Bellhaven or something like that. It's a smaller collider, but it's it's pointing mechanism. If you draw a line from the center to the it's got the loop and then it's got a building. If you draw a line to the building, which is the, the firing arm and it goes straight down Long Island Sound all the way down to lower Manhattan and it goes right in between where the two towers were. 
Okay. And then there's another one, I believe in Pennsylvania that in this weird spot that points, it hits nothing. There's nothing in between it and the towers again. What is up with that? You got to say that again. I was going in the YouTube comments and I just, I, I, I bl- there, there's two colliders that, that, that are you know, a couple hundred miles apart that are pointing pointing directly at the twin towers. Oh, snap. Yeah. Insane. Right at the twin towers. Huh? Wow. Right? I didn't know that. It's the only thing they're pointing at. We may as well, your previous podcast was like uh, the conspiracies, but it's, you know, it, it's so interesting. Yeah. People will call it. It's, it's annoying how effective that word is conspiracy because yeah. you're just trying to find the truth. And then yeah. that's such a great, you know, if you know magic and you know, manipulation or even martial arts, you have to hide what you're doing in plain sight. And it's amazing what some people have gotten away with. Like even right now, like I said to my friend um, in Canada, we just released that 98% of the deaths in Canada from coronavirus were uh, in long-term care facilities with the average death of 82 to 86. The average life expectancy in Canada is 84. Um, and then on top of that, um, Frig, what else do we got? I don't know. Just Oh yeah. So the um, excess morbidity isn't up. And so right. I present all three of those facts to my friend and his brain still can't accept it. And I was like, if it is a pandemic, like people do die in long-term care, that right. is the average age of death, and there is no excess morbidity. But what right. we do know is we can find a money trail to Bill Gates, who says overtly population control, who we know is not a good person. His dad was a eugenicist, right. um, and we can find all that money trail, but you don't want to look at that, so you're going to go sign up and get this thing. Um, you know, you, People are just – uh, really so late. Here, here's wanna... my here's my belief on what's happening. I believe that every hundred years they redo the exact same thing. In 1918, we had the Spanish flu. Well, guess what? The first people to get sick were all the guys that came home from the war that were heavily vaccinated, and they were all really sick. So they told the whole country, uh, "You need to get vaccinated to protect our heroes." So everybody got vaccinated, and everybody was wearing masks back then, right? And a lot of people died from. Vir- uh, from uh, from bacterial pneumonia, from wearing their stupid masks, okay? So now we got tests going on where they're poking at your blood-brain barrier, right? A, a disease that supposedly my spittle could travel 5.9 feet and kill you, but they got to stick a thing to the back of your brain to get, the- why don't you just spit on a Q-tip, okay? It's, it's ridiculous. And then, the, you know, they're going to roll out these vaccines so fast that we have to get two of them three weeks apart. There's no way, you know, the thing is, there's so many people that aren't, aren't going to get the vax, but even if they only vaxed half the country, okay, I think this is going to be the biggest depopulation uh, event ever. You got to look up Deagle.com, D-E-A-G-L-E, Deagle D- or E-L, Deagle.com, um, and look at the population uh, numbers for the United States and for Europe. Uh, they, they have, for 2025, the expected population in the United States is 99 million. I think I saw. I think I saw something like that. What is it? A reputable website that is it is. That? It's been yeah. up. It's a like quasi government website. It talks about gross national product and everything. It shows uh, China's going down by two million people, which is nothing. Um, Europe's going down by even more percentage wise than the United States. It's all of these Western um, countries that are going to have these vax rollouts that they're predicting mass die off in the next four years. I don't know. I see. I don't know I'd... what's going on, man. <laughs> I had seen that before. So what would be what would be the road to safety? And then the question is, oh, if we are if we are sovereign yes. free will beings and I yeah. have the creator in me, which I would, you know, like yes. and I'm powerful and free. That's a terrifying thing. So I'm like, how so, powerful and free am I? Like, So so here it is here. You asked. I was, I was like, what did he ask me before? Um, what can <laughs> we do? What we can do is not comply. When I go shopping, I'm the only person without a mask in that store. A thousand people. Right. You too. And. And when they, and, and it's been getting worse though. Like I went to Staples the other day and there's nobody in the freaking store and the cashier wouldn't check me out. And they called the manager over and I had to school them whole, the whole thing, school them. And they're like, well, you can go outside and call us and we'll bring it out to you. And I'm like, no, you know, and I explained a lot of them and they're trying to claim that they're a private business. I'm like, no, you're not. And I wouldn't leave. And I told them that I'm going to leave with the stuff if they don't take my money because they're, they're, that's actually the law. If they refuse to take your money, that means you can have it for free. So again, it's a, it's a horrible, it's exhausting. I go out. It's like, I didn't actually go out today. I don't even know what it's like outside today. Cause I stayed in all day. It's crazy, <laughs> but that's not a good thing. That's not what you should do. We, you should live your life the best that you can and, and not comply. Um, you can't wake everybody up, but you can share information for those willing to listen. You know, you can lead 
a uh, you know a, a man to knowledge, but you can't make him think. Or you know you could lead. <laughs> what was the? There was another. It was another one. I forgot it. Um, so again, don't comply. Uh, don't cave in. You know, don't be like, oh, I really want to go to that concert, and Ticketmaster won't sell me the ticket unless I have a vaccine pass. And you know, if you you know, I'm not telling you not to get the vaccine, but if you are dumb enough <laughs> to get the vaccine. <laughs> Um, this is just my opinion. Uh, you know, I'm just uh, for YouTube. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you, yeah. As as long as we're allowed here, because it's all going to be, it's all going to yeah. be erased. And like I'm saying, like I watched, uh, you know, I can't, and now I can't find it. And I really wanted it, but it was like a four hour thing on Rockefeller education. And it was this old presentation. It was so well done and now zipped gone. And, and I, it, it might be on stoplookthink.com. Okay. Stop. Yeah. If you know it, you know, and they, they lay it out and then you're like, Oh, this makes perfect sense. Yeah. And if you look at people of like integrity, intelligence, character, contribution, wholeness, spiritual values, um, they're easy to see. And it's easy to see people who are, you know, pious in their, you know, in their, their education, the new PhDs and, and all this stuff. And, you know, education's fine and all, but you also have other factors of uh, wisdom and intelligence. And we're just putting it all to intellect in these institutions where it's very compartmentalized. And if you look at what a human being is capable, uh, capable of in all of the different facets of intelligence, you know, why is that any better than being able to build a house from the ground up? That's probably more intelligent, you know, to be able to build and survive here and thrive. Um, you know, so we're just kind of, it's the inversion of reality. That's, that's what it is. We're, you know, now our immune systems are, are meaningless, you know, good diet yeah. is meaningless. That, right? That's the other thing, you know, they, they, they're, they're doing everything they can to make us unhealthy, taking away our, our source of income, Telling yeah. us to stay inside, having us rebreathe our own toxins after poking holes in our blood brain, man, you know, membrane. Yep. Um, yep. They're not letting us have human contact. We're taking away our ability to see faces, which is which is a form of contact, which is, you know, makes your brain grow when you're interpreting people's faces. They're removing all our new relationships. Every single relationship starts off with a smile. Well, guess what? That's been taken away 99 percent of the time now. Yeah. So they're doing everything they can to to make us sick. Then if anyone that holds their arm out and gets that vaccine, my opinion is you won't make it till 2025. So, um, you know, we're, we're going into some time. So so what can you do? You can not comply and do your best to prepare for what's coming and, you know, and and not be in fear. Um, that may be the journey that your soul was planning on. You know, I, I believe that we came here knowing what was going to happen. And we're on a journey um, to do the best that we can and have an experience and, and improve our, our soul. Damn. Well, I love it. Well, this has been fantastic. I could probably talk to you for another few hours. Is it? Well, we'll have to do another one because we're only touching on flat earth conspiracy. We could go into yeah. uh, 9-11. We could go into all kinds of stuff that you, you're, you're well-versed we in. Can, but so, not on YouTube, not on YouTube. Yeah, not on YouTube. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's funny because like the podcast and some of the friends, like, you know, it's all been on personal de development and spirituality, but I've been into the rabbit holes of wanting to know the truth at all of these things, 9-11, right. like, you know, the, the, the real history of humanity. And so- if you, if you want to learn, if it. you want to learn about 9-11 or the thing that happened in Connecticut or the one in Boston or all of the other ones, stoplookthink.com, go to the hoaxes drop down, click on that, bring popcorn and some hot chocolate or whatever you want and, uh, and dive in because all the information is there that YouTube has removed. Hey, let me just share the app one more time. Um, I make t-shirts is one way you, if you wanted to support me besides getting the app, which is $2.99. Um, this t-shirt over here is a cool one, but in the app, if you hit the settings button and you scroll down, you can go right to the t-shirt shop and uh, all sorts of cool flat earth shirts. Like if you're into flat earth and you, and you don't want to, you know, be that obvious, you can, you can wear, you know, different shirts. I have some COVID shirts on there, um, different stuff just for fun. Um, and that's it. And then the app again is called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you search Google Play or, I, or um, Apple for Flat Earth Clock, it'll come right up. And it's by Blue Water Bay, just to be sure you're getting the right one. Um, and that's that's it, man. This is uh, great talking to you. So where can where do people find more about you and your work? Yeah, my work, uh, my YouTube channel is uh, D-I-T-R-H, the shortest. Uh, it's the initials for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And I do mostly all short videos, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Like if I do a video, it's like seven minutes. People are like, oh, you did a documentary, you know? <laughs> so um, 
all short videos on Flat Earth that uh, that will will help you uh, learn. But uh, the best place to find me is on the app because I'm changing that every day, adding new content every day. Um, it is the you know nobody uh, so far has taken the Flat Earth challenge and not become a flat earther. So do not take the Flat Earth challenge unless you are prepared to deal with the fact that you will become at least a globe skeptic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, and skeptic I think, happens in day one, full flat earther before two weeks. Yeah, you know, and honestly, like for me, like when I look at what I know, like vaccines, we're supposed to just accept they're safe, right? And then when you take the time to peel all that back, you're like, holy smoke, something is going on here. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's wild. So I, I say question everything, you know what I mean? And and usually there there is an agenda and that's, that's the challenge. Like, you know, these people in Canada that are health experts, I didn't elect you to, to do anything for me. For yeah. you. <laughs> Think about this. We, we are created perfectly. Um, we Our bodies are created, um, you know, God created us perfectly with an immune system. This vaccine is going to change your DNA. Okay? You are no yeah. longer God's perfect creation. Right? And, and so a lot of people, you know, there's probably a lot of people that work in hospitals and, and places where they're going to be required to get a vaccine. Um, going back to Crow 777 Radio, um, just their last episode is worth is is worth its weight in gold. They have a nurse on who um, took a new job with a hospital across the country, moved her whole family across the country. She had a contract with them that she would not get vaccinated. They agreed, and when she got there, like, oh, you have to get vaccinated. And it got into this whole back and forth. And by herself, without any lawyers or anything, she got the giant hospital to back down and sign. Uh, she wrote a paper based on the stuff that she heard on Crow. Um, to get them to agree not to give her the vaccine. And basically the gist of it was that she is her, her a perfect creation. And then when she leaves work, she can leave all of her work stuff there and, there and it must be removed. So they can't put something in her that they can't remove. Amazing letter. Um, so if anyone is looking for information on how to refuse the vaccine, because you can't just say no, you have to kind of give them a counter offer. You know, I'll take yeah, your vaccine. Are you talking about a notice of liability? Yeah, it, it's it's like a notice of liability, but they're taking this stuff to the next level. Um, I, I'm telling you, sign up for Crow and just get that last episode, or the, he did a whole series of them recently, and you will um, you will have information that is going to benefit you in the very near future, very near future, because we're all going to need this stuff um, to be able to fight the tyranny that's coming. Man, well, that sounds terrifying. Um, I don't <laughs> don't, care see, no, that's the thing. <laughs> don't be terrified. We live. We're on a we're on a a roller coaster. I love roller coasters, and it's a massive puzzle. But there is a solution. There's always a solution. And uh, and and so you know, I'm feeling very accomplished in in my journey because I'm figuring all these things out. I've yet to put a mask on. Okay, I had to put a bandana on. My daughter got in an accident, had to get some facial surgery in, in New York City, and I had to go into the hospital. So I put a bandana on. Okay, a bandana. Um, but since I haven't worn a mask once, um, besides that, so uh, again, as we figure these things out, it, you're, you're just you're we're making um, roads to uh, a future that you know will benefit us. I don't know how you know there's there's some insane times coming soon, but you know it, it all depends on your attitude how you how you um, ride through them. So you think God, nature, spirit, the universe, the good guys will find a way to something positive and everybody else can choose that dystopian reality or vaccine if they want. But if you make a different choice, the solution will be given to you. Yeah, I, I, I believe that we are in biblical times. I'm not the one to quote the Bible, but the, you know, I, I kind of believe that the vaccine is, is on the lines of the mark of the beast. Like if you take the vaccine, you are, you're taking, you know, what, what if if you bought a, the like the, the most high end car, beautiful, brand new, first one of its kind, and you bring it over to Johnny's garage shop and you change the doors and you put a different hood on it? You know, the, the guy that made the car is going to be he's going to be like, what the hell did you do to my car? You know, it's like you can't bring it back here anymore. You're changing your design. I don't know if that was a good analogy, but oh, it was pretty good. good. It was yeah. good for me. It worked for me. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this RNA vaccine, um, I just tell people I don't tell them not to do it. I say educate yourself, you know. Um, you know, find some channels, go, go on bit shoots. There's a bunch of good guys there, you know, Max Egan's on there and uh, dollar vigilante. He, he's laying it out. Dollar vigilante has great, um, great, uh, resources on how to break away from the system. You know, 
Um, the guy's been right for the last 10 years on everything he said, and he hasn't screwed up yet. So again, tons of resources. <clears throat> the Flat Earth Clock app has links to lots of that stuff uh, in the in the in that in that Corona tab um, that's in there. That changes daily. More and stuff gets added every day. So it's an endless resource. Cool. Cool. Well, this was a ton of fun. I appreciate you, you know, quitting your uh, successful business job to come out here. And it's, it's not about money. People are like, Oh, he's selling his app. He's doing it for money. Uh, no, I would make more money than the app makes me in like a week than, you know, <laughs> than doing this. I love talking to people. I love talking to awake people like you. They're the people in your audience yourself, uh, all the other people I talk to. It, it's an amazing journey. And um, we all need to connect before we, you know, they're, they're going to, you know, one day we're going to wake up and the internet might not work. You know, then what do you do? Do you know your neighbors? Do you have any friends? You yeah. know, what are you going to do? Do you have any yeah. books? You know, if you, if you see information that you like, and it's in a book, buy the book, even if you don't read it, buy the book, put it on your bookshelf books, you know, won't be deleted. My bookshelf, it's either going to be worth millions of dollars or it's going to get me put in jail. <laughs> yeah. Again, 1984. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. They come after the, the digital stuff was easy, you know, and, and that's right. how, you know, it's very obvious to me and many others that we're in a war, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. If you if you've ever studied war or combat, it's it's incredibly easy to understand. But most people have never looked at it and they've just kind of gone along with the flow. And um, but, yeah, these are challenging times that people need to wake up and we need to um, be good examples, connect to our own spirituality in whatever way that is. And do our own research. Do not give your mind or body to anyone else. Exactly. Exactly. It, keep control of your soul. That's it. Mm. Don't let it be lured away in the soul lure system. Know where your feet are planted. Know that you have all of the power. And it's only up to you if you want to give it away or use it for good. Love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to share before we end this? This was great. Um, no, that's it. Um, you know, the, if you want to support me, get the app. The app has, once you pay $2.99, there's one pop-up a day. You can exit out immediately. It says, would you like to subscribe for 99 cents a month or $11 for the year? If you don't want to, it's okay. Exit out. You can do it in less than a second. And it only shows up once every 24 hours. There's no ads to watch. There's no nothing. And you still get everything. Okay. So I think it's a pretty fair deal, but there's people that wake up every day and go grab their app. The first thing like, all right, what's the video today? Okay. You know, what am I going to learn today? And those people I'm like, I think you can support me for 99 cents. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it, you know, especially with what's going on here, I kind of had to put an SOS to my community. Like I'm getting deleted yeah. everywhere. All the let, like, this is hard. This is not an easy task to share the truth. You do get attacked. Right. Um, they try to cripple you with the money. They do whatever they can. Uh, and it's incredibly challenging and I've, faced it. And so I think that we should support the people who are uh, putting their necks on the line and, and doing these things. Cause uh, I, I know for myself and many others, it's been a very challenging road, but I think that it's, it's worth it. I want to, like you said, I want to remain in integrity. And if I feel like since I've been accurate since March, just following people that made sense and, and we're being honest and being congruent and using my own critical thinking and doing a lot of research um, to share that so people can make better decisions, you know, and say, hey, this is the best information that I'm finding. What's the best information that you have? Does it line up? You know what I mean? And then you start stacking everything like the discovery of truth about vaccines, about the pharmaceuticals, about all that stuff. Is it this beautiful, wonderful thing that's been helping people since the 1900s or is it for profit and for manipulation? The, the evidence that it is that and for you, is a lot stronger, but you need to look at both. And then uh, it's just like the Kennedy versus Dershowitz um, debate. If you watch that, when you watch yeah, Kennedy did. versus Der Dershowitz, he destroyed him. It was like Mike yeah. Tyson beating up a baby. Um, right. There was no contest because Kennedy came from uh, logic, truth, integrity, mm -hmm. uh, came over the manipulation that Dershowitz tried to put, you corrected him, and then you, it was just obvious which one uh, had more weight. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the, all of these topics that we're bringing up, we're all – program we're all triggered um you know vaccines well, well what about polio right if you know the truth about polio we're not going to get into it now but you know polio was is not a real disease it, it had to do with the ddt on the trees that the kids were eating and they were getting paralyzed and, and spraying the kids with ddt yeah, yeah that that too um but again if you want to learn about polio go to you know about vaccines and polio crow triple seven radio with two r's and crow dot com and look up the the episodes on vaccines in one or two episodes and then you will know okay you know that 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 website that 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 show 
is greater than any college you could ever go to. If you watched all the episodes, you will know more than more useful information than any college could ever teach you. Yeah, I got to get into it. It always comes up as a very, I always see clips here and there. I never go into the deep dive because I'm usually creating, but. The um, first gotta... hour is for free on uh, on YouTube, but uh, you know, the second hour is behind the paywall. I think it's $5 a month. Okay, here's what you can do. Sign up for a month or two, download all the episodes. Okay, and then you'll have, you'll have a ton of information. If you want to quit after that, go ahead and quit. But you yeah, won't or, want to quit because you, you'll, like, you'll, just... you'll want to keep getting the new stuff because the new stuff is super pertinent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. So 100%. I think we should support the creators too, because this is in, you know, in trying times and we got to put our um, right. support to people who are doing it. So this has been great. We'll, uh, we'll stay in touch. I, I know a lot's coming down the pipe here. So holy smokes, man, buckle yeah. up. <laughs> Anything, and, and here, don't be afraid, you know, uh, embrace it with your heart and, and follow your soul and you'll have a successful trip. Love it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for adding a high note. I'm like, oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> but uh, this has been great. I appreciate you. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. All right. Thanks a so lot. Peace.